Welcome to the ultimate guide on Stoicism, a timeless philosophy that has been guiding individuals towards personal growth, resilience, and happiness for centuries. This comprehensive manual is designed to be your go-to resource, not only to understand the core principles and techniques of Stoicism, but also to apply them practically in your daily life. Whether you're looking to navigate the complexities of modern living, seeking to build resilience against life's challenges, or aspiring to craft your happiest dream life, this guide is tailored for you. At its heart, Stoicism teaches us the art of living in harmony with the natural order of the world, focusing on what we can control and letting go of what we can't. This guide breaks down these ancient teachings into simple, actionable steps that you can incorporate into your everyday life. From mastering your emotions to fostering a sense of detachment from external circumstances, we'll explore how the Stoics approached life's hurdles and how you can do the same. You'll learn about the key techniques used by Stoic philosophers like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus, techniques such as journaling, mindfulness and the dichotomy of control. More importantly, we'll show you how to apply these techniques in various situations, whether you're dealing with stress at work, personal loss, or the pursuit of personal goals. This guide aims to equip you with the tools not only to survive, but to thrive in the face of adversity. By integrating stoic practices into your life, you'll develop a stronger, more resilient mindset that enables you to face any situation with calmness and clarity. You'll discover how to turn obstacles into opportunities, how to maintain your inner peace in chaos, and how to cultivate a life filled with joy, purpose, and contentment. Let's begin. There was no doubt in the Stoics' minds. It's not just a feeling to believe in yourself. It's a skill and a way of thinking about life. One clear fact about getting to know yourself is that how much you get done depends on how sure you are of yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, your goals and dreams can be taken away. Think about how often fear and doubt stop people with natural talent who are ready to do great things. First, let's talk about what it means to have confidence in yourself. It doesn't just happen, you have to get to know and accept yourself first. In Stoic thought, self-confidence comes from being aware of our good and bad traits and making the most of them. People have been telling us for a long time that real confidence comes from within, not from other people liking or praising us. The great Stoic philosopher Epictetus said we shouldn't worry about things we can't change. We should work on changing the things we can, like how we think, feel and act. We are stronger and better able to handle hard times when we think this way. Being honest is another important part of having self-confidence. Being honest about who you are, what you stand for and what you want is important. Living by your own rules instead of what other people think of you gives you a strong sense of inner peace and stability, which is important for having real confidence. To feel more secure, it's also helpful to think about and judge ourselves. When we look at ourselves, we can see what we need to work on and what we're proud of. We learn and grow all the time, which helps us know what we can do and get past our fears. A big part of having self-confidence is being strong when we mess up or fail. Stoicism says that we should see problems as chances to learn and get better. Instead of being afraid of our mistakes, we should accept them and learn from them. This makes us stronger and better prepared for what comes next. Last but not least, doing things boosts self-confidence. The Stoics said that it's not enough to think about ideas. You have to act on them. Try to live by these ideas every day by meeting your fears, being strong and sticking to what you believe in you'll gain real confidence that lasts. First, get to know yourself. Learn more about what it means to be aware of yourself. As your confidence grows, serious self-examination isn't just about judging yourself. It's about getting to the heart of who you are, 
Who you are is more important than what you can do. A famous Stoic thinker named Epictetus says we should really look at ourselves and figure out what our fears and reasons are. Being able to honestly and deeply understand yourself is the key to having real self-confidence. Think about how important it is to know yourself well. It's not enough to know your skills and flaws. You also need to understand how they fit with the things you stand for. Stoicism is based on the idea that you can only truly understand yourself when you look at how your thoughts, feelings and deeds fit together. Your confidence is really high because of this game. What does this have to do with our everyday lives? Start by thinking about what you do first when things get tough. Think about whether I'm acting quickly or because it's what I really believe. You build your self-confidence when you act in ways that aren't scared or meant to show off, but because you know yourself and are being honest. Think before you act every day. Take a moment to ask yourself, is this really who I am and what I believe? You are being true to yourself and building your confidence every time you make a choice after giving it some thought. Remember that the first step to building confidence is to understand yourself. Being honest with yourself is the most important thing. It takes time and patience. You'll have to face some hard facts along the way, but you'll also learn new strengths and skills. You need to know that it's okay to not know everything and to feel weak sometimes as you learn about yourself. It's important for your growth as a person to be okay with not knowing everything and to know your boundaries. You are free to try new things when you accept yourself in this way. These new experiences can change how you see the world and yourself. Knowing how strong your thoughts and views are is another important part of getting to know yourself. What you think about yourself and your skills, how you talk to yourself and how you understand things that happen all have a big impact on your confidence. You can change how you think about yourself by talking to yourself more positively and asking yourself why you have worries about yourself. Being self-aware also means being aware of and accepting of your emotions. What makes you feel good and what scares you can tell you a lot. Listen to your emotions and try to figure out why you have them. This will help you figure out what drives you and what you really want. Being honest, staying true to your ideals and always being yourself come from knowing yourself. Sometimes this is hard, especially when other people want you to act a certain way. Still, being true to yourself makes you feel better about yourself and helps you build deeper, more honest relationships with other people. To sum up, the best way to build confidence is to know yourself well. You not only understand who you are better as you learn more about yourself, but you also see the world in a new way and get along better with others. You will become a better person with each step you take in this process. You should also know that some things can't be changed. One important idea in Stoicism is to think about what you can and cannot control. Truly having confidence that lasts is based on getting this right. It's not about giving up, it's about being okay with how things are. A famous Stoic thinker named Epictetus says that how we react to things is more important than what happens to us. It takes courage to accept what you can't do. Things like what other people do and what has already happened are out of your power. Accepting these limits gives you more energy and focus to work on the things you can change, like the things you do, say, and decide. First, Look at what you do every day to build your inner power through acceptance. Pay attention to the times you feel helpless and angry. Ask yourself, am I trying to manage something I can't? Your inner will gets stronger when you think about things you can change. This makes you stronger, more flexible and more sure of yourself. Finally, having real self-confidence means being aware of what you can and cannot handle. You become stronger and more flexible when you accept the things you can't change and work on the things you can. You also become calm, which shows that you have real confidence. 
Okay with what you can't change. That's the second thing Epictetus said. Change what you can. You can feel more calm inside when you think this way. There is more peace when you accept the things you can't change and stop worrying about having to change everything. Being calm makes you think more about what you do and how you can make it better. It helps you deal with tough situations better. Not doing anything isn't really what it means to accept something. It means realizing that we can't change some things. We think about what we can do and what we're good at more now. We feel more in charge and independent when we adopt this mindset. It shows us that we can pick how to respond to things in life, even if we can't change them. This could mean letting go of anger from the past or worries about what's to come in real life. We can't change the past or know what will happen in the future, but what we do today can make our lives better. To build confidence, it's also important to be kind to yourself, especially when things go wrong. You can think clearly and keep going with purpose if you know that everyone makes mistakes, and that's how we learn. Accepting things helps you live a more honest life in the end. You'll have more energy to live by your beliefs and do what you love when you stop trying to control things you can't change. Being honest and having a clear goal makes life more interesting and satisfying, and confidence grows on its own. It's good to be okay with things you can't change and work on things you can. This will help you feel more secure. You should be aware of what you do and calm down knowing that you can't change everything but how you respond. In this way, you not only gain confidence but also knowledge and peace of mind which makes your life better and more important. Third, being able to focus means avoiding everything else and giving attention to what's important. The Stoics say that what we think about a lot affects how good our life is. It's about making smart decisions about what to focus on and what to ignore. Aristotle said that the thoughts we have shape our lives. It takes practice and self-control to pay attention to what's important. It's hard to stay focused when there are so many things going on around us. This is where Stoic methods really help because they teach your mind to ignore things that aren't important. You learn to keep your eyes on your real dreams and goals. Find out what's distracting you before you try to stay away from it. A lot of people worry too much, use social media too much, or try to make everyone happy. Once you know what they are, you can do something to lessen their effect. You could learn to say no to things that don't fit with your beliefs or set times when you don't use technology. Not only that, but some activities can help you focus better. Like, meditation can help you train your mind to pay attention to the present moment. Figure out what you need to do every day is another good idea. Want to know what the most important thing is that you need to do today? To stay focused on this makes everything you do more meaningful and boosts your confidence as you live your life the way you want to. Remember that attention isn't just a skill, it's how you live your life. If you focus on the important things and ignore the rest, you not only get more done, but you also feel calm, which is very important for being sure of yourself. That's how Stoics see how important it is to concentrate. The fourth tip is to get tougher. Stoicism teaches us a very important lesson. You don't are born tough, you learn to be tough. Stoic toughness is more than just getting through hard times. It means seeing problems as chances to make things better. Someone once said that how you handle bad things doesn't really show who you are, but how you handle them. Being calm means that you should always try to improve yourself. Every issue or tough situation has a lesson hidden inside it. When things go wrong, don't give up. Instead, ask yourself, what can this teach me? When you think about it this way, every mistake you make is a chance to get better and become stronger. When things get tough, being strong really means being tough as a rock. Trouble doesn't scare you or make you run away. You face it head on. When you face your fears and get through them, you get stronger and more sure of yourself. 
Remember that being tough isn't just about getting through tough times. It's also about finding the good in them. Every day can look different when you use perseverance. You might have to do something you've been putting off or deal with something big, like getting over a loss. Think like a stoic. How you handle things is more important than what occasions you face. When bad things happen, you should be sure of yourself and know that every bad thing is an opportunity to get better and stronger. This is what it means to be stoic, to turn problems and hard times into strengths and ways to move forward. If you stay strong, your confidence will grow even more. Accepting that life won't always be easy or fair is also part of being strong. It means knowing that we can get through hard times. It's not about giving up when we accept that hard times are a part of life and that we're strong enough to deal with them. Think about the long term instead of just worrying about today's problems if you want to be tough like a stoic. You have to think about the future and see how these hard times can help you get better in the long run. Another great way to get stronger is to be thankful. Thoughts about what you have instead of what you don't have can help you stay upbeat even when things are tough. Being thankful changes the way you see problems so that you see them as chances to learn and get better. Being tougher gets better when you get help from other people and are part of a group. During hard times, it's very helpful to be with people who care about and understand you. These links not only make you feel better, but they also help you remember that you're not alone in your problems. Being tough as a stoic is a promise to keep growing in the end. It means seeing every event, good or bad, as a chance to learn something new about yourself and the world around you. This way of thinking helps you enjoy the ups and downs of life, believing that you can handle and achieve no matter what. In conclusion, being tough is a great way to deal with things in life. When things get tough, we should face them, learn from them, and use them to get stronger and more sure of ourselves. Being strong and tough helps us not only get through hard times, but also get better, stronger, and more sure of ourselves. Fifth point, be more humble. It's easy to act too proud when you're trying to be sure of yourself, but having confidence doesn't mean being cocky. It is very important to be humble in stoic thought. Being humble is one of the best traits a person can have. Epictetus said that you can't learn anything new if you think you already know everything. Being humble helps you learn, get better, and connect with other people in a real way. When you choose between humility and vanity, you're not picking between weakness and strength. You're choosing to understand your own limits and value the knowledge and worth of others. A humble person knows that they can always learn something new and get better, no matter how smart or skilled they are. Epictetus says that being humble doesn't mean putting yourself down. It means having a good view of yourself and realizing that you're not the most important person in the world. It can be hard to become more humble every day, especially when people care more about how things look than what they are. Listen more and talk less. Be open to what other people have to say and know that you don't have to be right all the time. When you do well, let other people know. Remember that everyone you meet has been through things you haven't. When you become more humble, your confidence grows steadily and over time. People respect and look up to you more because you're more open, flexible and interesting. Being truly humble not only makes you a better person, it also helps you connect with other people better. So try to be humble. That's the only way to gain real, deep confidence. To be humble, you have to be able to see and praise other people's wins and good points. This shows them that we value them and helps us see how each person brings something unique and important to the table. This helps us value how different people are and how their success doesn't make someone else's less important. When we are humble, we recognize that we don't know everything and that we may need help from people who do. It means you're strong, not weak. We can grow and improve our ties with others if we are willing to learn from them 
and work together. Being humble also means taking a moment to consider what we did, admitting when we were wrong and trying to make things right. It's very important for getting better. When we know our skills and flaws, we can build real confidence with this kind of honest self-check. Being grateful for what we have, our friends and family, and the chances we get is part of being humble. It helps us pay attention to what's important. Being thankful keeps us connected to the world and to each other, making us feel like we're a part of something bigger. To sum up, one of the most important stoic traits for building strong, long-lasting confidence is humility. To always learn from other people and our surroundings, to treat people with respect and honesty, and to value ourselves without thinking too highly of ourselves are all good things. Being more humble makes us better people and the world a better place to live by showing more care, respect and connection. Sixth point. Know what you believe and live by it. Real, long-lasting confidence comes from living in a way that supports the things you believe in. You need to live by your beliefs every day, not just know them. Stoics believe it is very important to be honest and true to yourself. Epictetus once said that it's not enough to say you'll do the right thing. You have to do it. It's very important to have personal beliefs. They help you make decisions, act, and shape your life. Believe in the things that matter most to you, like being honest, loyal, brave, or kind. Figure out what's most important to you and follow those rules. When you live with integrity, what you say and do is in line with what you believe and value. Sometimes people try to get you to do things that go against what you believe in. You feel better about yourself every time you choose to be true to yourself over the easy way out. You show yourself that what you believe is true and important to you. Start with small changes in your daily life to make sure what you do matches what you believe is right. If you value honesty, you should always tell the truth, even if it's tough. Feel good about being kind. Do good things for other people, even if no one sees. You can become the person you want to be by doing these little good things every day. Always keep in mind that living by your beliefs is a process, not a destination. Of course, you will make mistakes along the way, but what counts is that you learn from them. Not only do you feel better about who you are, but you also become a good example for others when you set your own standards and stick to them. To live a happy, meaningful and sure of yourself life, you must stay true to your beliefs. Being true to your beliefs means telling people the truth, keeping your promises and acting in a way that shows what's important to you. Being honest about what you think not only makes you feel better, but it also builds trust in other people. To live by your beliefs, you have to take responsibility for what you do and the things that happen because of it. When you own up to your mistakes and make things right, you show that you care about your values. It's very important to regularly think about what you're doing. You can be sure you're living your life in line with your values when you think about what you've done and chosen. A great way to keep growing and getting better is to do this self-check every so often. Seventh tip, show thanks. Being grateful is a key part of being strong and boosting your confidence. It's not enough to be grateful for the big things in life. You should also value the little things and be thankful for them. Alexander the Great once said, when you wake up in the morning, think of what a precious gift it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. Write down three things you're thankful for every morning. A warm day, a good cup of coffee, or the smile of a loved one could be all it takes. This exercise encourages a positive mindset by shifting your attention from what you don't have to what you do. Being grateful also means noticing the work that others do and being thankful for the help and kindness you receive from family, friends, and even strangers. Thanking people makes ties stronger and creates a group of people who will support you. Appreciating the problems you face is another part of being grateful. 
instead of seeing them as problems, see them as chances to get better and learn. This point of view not only makes you stronger, but it also helps you understand and value life's challenges more. Eighth point, be open to learning and being curious. Getting more knowledgeable and skilled makes you feel more confident. Stoic learning isn't just about doing well in school. It's also about being interested in yourself and the world around you. This quote by Epictetus makes learning very important. Only the educated are free. Commit to learning something new every day. It could be an idea, a fact, or a skill. This constant learning keeps your mind busy and active, and it also makes it easier for you to handle new situations. Being curious also means being willing to hear other points of view. Talk to people who have had different situations and hold different views. This not only helps you understand more, but it also teaches you to care about others and accept differences. Remember that you can learn new things all your life. Your confidence and knowledge grow every time you learn something new. In life, there are some simple but important things to understand early on. Think of them like secret codes in video games that give you an advantage. These lessons help you deal with life's challenges and do well. We're going to talk about seven of these lessons and how they can make your life better. Knowing these lessons isn't just about learning, it's about giving yourself power. They can help you create a meaningful and successful life. Each lesson is valuable no matter your age or situation. They help you understand life better. Remember, what you learn today can help you succeed tomorrow. These lessons are like cheat codes passed down from past generations and shaped by today's insights. They can unlock a future full of hope and success. As you journey through life, you'll see how powerful these lessons are. Use them to grow and find happiness, starting from your youth and continuing throughout your life. What effect does adult material have on the internet world today? Online adult entertainment is easier to get to than ever before thanks to sites like Pornhub, TikTok, Instagram and OnlyFans. It's easy to get explicit content with just a tap on our computers. Still, the possible effects get worse as it gets easier to get to this kind of material. Too much exposure to obscene material has been shown to throw off the delicate balance of a person's sexual urges. In a world where temptation is always just a click away, it can become harder to resist these urges, which can have serious effects. Notably, this loss of control can show up as a sense of losing one's manhood, this idea was shared even by famous people in history, like Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor who was at the height of his power. In his well-known work, Meditations, Aurelius said that sexual promiscuity was a sign of weakness. Even though these activities are undeniably fun, he said that true morality and self-control should come first. And because of that, everyone, but especially young people, needs to understand how important this problem is. Even the most responsible people can get hooked on adult material, which can change their self-control, ideas about what it means to be a man, and even their lives. To learn this lesson is to take control of your wants, build resilience, and set goals for your own growth. By realizing how important self-control is, people can regain their sense of self and find their way to a more purpose-driven, satisfying life. These lessons are very important in this digital age because they help us control our wants and avoid the dangers they can bring. 2. How strong testosterone is. Many people call testosterone the manly hormone. It is an important hormone that affects many parts of a person's life. It gives you strength, drive, confidence, physical ability, muscle growth, and even stronger bones. This hormone is a key part of being a man. It affects not only the physical traits that make someone unique, but also their mental and emotional ones. In the past, 
men naturally had high amounts of testosterone, which let them use this hormone's power to their benefit. But living in the modern world comes with a lot of things that make it hard to keep testosterone levels good. Too many calories and not moving around enough are two of the biggest causes. The problem of eating too many calories is especially bad in today's world. The number of calories we eat has reached amounts that have never been seen before. It is interesting to note that the average daily calorie intake in the 1960s was about 2,700 calories. These days, it is around 3,800 calories. This unhealthy eating habits, along with a lack of physical activity, creates a number of problems. When you eat too many calories, you often gain fat. This fat includes estrogen precursors, which can turn into estrogen, a hormone that works against testosterone. Total, this causes testosterone levels to drop, which makes men weak and tired. People are told to think about going back to their old eating habits in order to deal with this problem and get back control over their testosterone levels. Cutting daily food intake to levels similar to those in the 1960s, about 2,700 calories per day, can make a real difference in your health and well-being. In addition, it's important to know that exercise is a strong way to keep testosterone levels steady or even raise them. In the 1960s, President Eisenhower signed into law a law that required male high school students to take physical fitness tests. As a pledge to a physically busy lifestyle, these tests included pull-ups, sit-ups, runs, broad jumps and ball throws, among other things. You don't have to do these exact steps, but the general idea stays the same. Being active on a daily basis, whether it's through sports, strength training or jogging, can help you keep a healthy weight and keep your hormones, including testosterone levels, in balance. By doing these things, you can take care of your hormone health and enjoy the rewards of having a strong and healthy testosterone profile. 3. Why mental health is important. People's mental health is an important part of their lives because it affects their general quality of life, relationships and well-being. But it's an important part of our lives that we ignore, downplay or ignore without giving it much thought which could have very bad results. There is a worrying trend going on right now. The number of suicides is going up. This scary increase shows how important it is to deal with mental health problems right away. The path of life is complicated and full of ups and downs, trials and happiness. It's a journey that everyone goes on and sometimes the road can be full of problems that seem impossible to solve. During these times of weakness and hopelessness, it's very clear how important mental health is. Ignoring mental health issues can have terrible effects that go beyond the person affected and affect families, neighborhoods and society as a whole. Today, the number of suicides is higher than it was after major events like World War II and the Great Depression. We need to change the way we think about mental health in a big way because of this worrying trend. Seeing a therapist or counsellor is an effective way to deal with this problem and build mental resilience. Talking to a mental health worker about your problems is a great way to deal with mental and emotional problems. It gives you a safe place to talk about and explore your feelings, thoughts and fears while getting help and advice that is specific to your situation. Therapy is a bright spot in a dark time, giving people new ideas, ways to deal with problems, and a way to stay alive when they feel hopeless. It gives people the tools they need to deal with and get through the complicated parts of life, giving them back control over their feelings and future. Recognizing the importance of this aspect of our well-being is a proof to our strength and resilience. Mental health is an essential component of the human experience. It's not a sign of weakness to ask for help when you need it. Instead, it's a brave and responsible step toward a more fulfilling and healthy life. 
A focus for mental health is an act of self-compassion that helps everyone, especially in a world where suicide rates are going up and life is full of problems. 4. Having strong bodies helps your mind stay strong. The mind-body link is deeply supported by the way that the physical and mental parts of our lives are always interacting with each other. In this complex relationship, physical strength turns out to be a potent motivator for building mental resilience and boosting self-esteem. In modern times, however, we are at a crossroads where the history of physical ability is giving way to a worrying loss of strength. In fact, it's this drop that calls for a rise in physical exercise, especially strength training. The value of being physically strong goes far beyond sports successes and factors. Mental resilience is built on this base. People can start a life-changing journey of self-discovery and confidence by doing strength training. Going to the gym to do strength training isn't just about getting bigger and stronger or being able to lift heavy weights. It's about how people's minds change along with their bodies getting better. Watching your body change, seeing your muscles grow and feeling the fresh energy flowing through your veins is a sign of the limitless potential that lives inside you. Doing strength training has a huge effect on brain resilience. You feel better about your self-worth as your physical skills grow. You start to understand your own strength and ability, which makes you mentally stronger. Problems that seemed impossible to solve at first turn out to be chances to learn and grow. The confidence you gain doesn't just stay at the gym. It spreads to every part of your life. Physical strength is going down, which is a worrying trend that our age is seeing. This problem is made clear by a study that shows millennial strength has dropped by 22% compared to their parents. This decline isn't just about our bodies. It's also a sign of a bigger culture shift that risks our sense of who we are as strong, capable people. It's easy to see what to do. Do muscle training. When you go to the gym, you can regain and change your physical strength. Your body gets bigger and your confidence goes through the roof as you lift higher weights. Infusing you with the grit and resilience to face hardship head-on, this newly discovered mental and physical strength acts as a powerful shield against challenges in life. When you embrace your physical strength, you'll see that it's not just about how you look, it's also a source of confidence, mental toughness, and a powerful way to change yourself. You will realize that the gym is more than just weights and reps as you start this trip. It is a safe place where you can build a strong, confident, and durable self. 5. Getting rid of external validation. Seeking approval from other people has become an important part of our lives in this age of social media and a world that is becoming more and more linked. Being constantly on the lookout for likes, acceptance, and good comments can have a big effect on our mental and emotional health. People who are on this quest often pay a high price for it. They can become depressed and lose confidence in themselves. It's impossible to deny the appeal of outside approval, especially on social media sites. The likes, comments and shares are digital signs that show people think we're good and popular. But as this outward approval becomes more and more important to our sense of self-worth, it can slowly take away our independence and confidence. This change makes it so that our emotions and self-esteem are affected by the whims of a digital audience that changes all the time. In this situation, trying to get approval from others can create bad outcomes. It could cause thoughts of not being good enough, fear, and even sadness over time. The constant need for praise can make it hard to see our own worth separating our sense of self-worth from the unpredictable waves of social media feedback. We need to change how we relate to external feedback in order to find an answer. We don't have to desperately seek it from other people. Instead, we can try to make more content and consume less. This change in attention can be very freeing and life-changing. 
We can easily share our ideas, skills, and innovation when we make material. It gives us a chance to be proud of who we are and share our unique points of view with the world without expecting instant approval from others. Making something, like writing, art, or any other form of self-expression, is a strong way to grow as a person and feel more confident in your own worth. Also, limiting the amount of content you watch, especially content that reinforces unrealistic standards or encourages damaging comparisons, can make you feel much better about your own self-perception. We can protect ourselves from the negative effects of social comparison by choosing the content we see online that educates, motivates, and encourages us. By lowering the amount of external support we receive, we regain control of our self-esteem and realize that our worth is not based on the digital praise of others. By making things instead of just buying them, we not only break the cycle of needing approval from other people, but we also find out how unique and valuable we really are. 6. The Effects of Playing Video Games Too much! Video games are a popular and fun way to pass the time in this digital world. As soon as this form of pleasure turns into an all-consuming addiction, it can have very negative effects on a person's health. When people play video games too much, it can set off a chain of bad things that happen in real life as well. One of the most obvious effects of playing video games too much is that it can make you fat. People who spend a lot of time in front of screens and don't move around much tend to eat too many calories and not do enough physical exercise. This difference makes it more likely that the person will gain weight, which in turn makes them more likely to be obese. Long game sessions directly cause sedentary behavior, which makes the problem even worse. Physical activity is an important part of our biology that we often forget about, which can cause a wide range of health issues. The effects are felt not only in the physical world, but also in the mental and emotional ones. Some of the mental problems that can come up because of playing video games too much are trouble sleeping, sadness, and worry. When people play video games for long periods of time, their circadian rhythms get thrown off, which makes it harder for them to sleep. This can then lead to sleep problems like insomnia or broken sleep cycles, which make it harder for the body to recover and recharge. Anxiety and depression can also take hold, often slowly and sneakily. Long-term games can make you feel alone, and not being able to interact with other people in real life can make you feel depressed, lonely and uneasy. There are a lot of interesting things to do and people to meet in the real world that the internet world can't replace. Moderation is the answer to these possible bad effects of playing video games too much. It's important to know the importance of balance and include healthy tasks in your daily life. People can live a more healthy and satisfying life by cutting down on the time they spend gaming and replacing it with things like spending time with family and friends or working out. People can enjoy video games as a form of fun without giving in to their bad effects if they do it in moderation. It balances screen time and real life activities again, which is good for both emotional and physical health. When people change their goals, they can live a better and more fulfilling life where the draw of virtual worlds doesn't take away from the huge potential of the real world. 7. Why making friends is important. The ties we make with other people are the threads that hold our lives together. People often think of socializing as a basic human need. It's not just a fun thing to do. It's a powerful force that can change our lives in big ways. However, introversion or social nervousness can be very hard for some people, making it harder for them to reach their goals. If you are antisocial, either because you are naturally shy or because you have social anxiety, it can hurt your chances in many areas of your life. This doesn't mean that being shy is always a bad thing. It just shows how important it is to connect with other people in order to reach your full potential. 
People often mistake introversion for a weakness, but it has its own strengths, like the ability to think deeply about things and be more sensitive. Without a doubt, introverts can benefit greatly from resisting the urge to avoid social settings. Going out of your safe zone and interacting with other people, even if it's just on a small level, can make you more charismatic, improve your communication skills and make it easier to build relationships. Also, people who deal with social nervousness, which is a real and common condition, shouldn't let it stop them from moving forward. Dealing with and even getting rid of social anxiety can be done through a number of different therapy methods. Taking steps to deal with social anxiety can lead to more social interactions, getting out of one's comfort zone and more money-making possibilities. People often think of charisma as a rare skill, but these exchanges can help you develop it. Not only does it mean being able to interact with others well, but it also means being able to gain their trust, like and impact. Charisma is a strong trait that can help you get leadership positions, work with others and move up in your job. A lot of the time, relationships, both personal and business, are what make people successful. Socializing helps these connections grow by giving you a chance to meet teachers, partners, co-workers, friends and possible clients. People build networks through social relationships that can open up new opportunities and help them grow as people. Qualifications and skills play a role in financial possibilities, but the ability to speak and build relationships is also very important. A lot of ways to make more money can be found by networking and building relationships. In the big picture, being antisocial doesn't have to be an impossible problem. There is a way to deal with this problem, and when it is solved, it can lead to personal and career success. The power of socializing doesn't come from changing who you are, but from using the possibility of links with other people. Getting involved with other people can lead to a happier, more successful and more socially rewarding life full of chances and endless personal growth. Over the course of our lives, we've learned a lot of important lessons, each with its own meaning. From the effects of adult content to the strength of testosterone, from the importance of mental health to the importance of physical strength, from the effects of too much gaming to the importance of making friends. These lessons have shown me the way to personal growth, success and resilience. As we come to the end of this study, keep in mind that life is a moving game and that these insights are your trick codes, your secret ways to get through its turns and curves. You won't be successful because of just one lesson, but because of all of these. Seeking knowledge, balance and personal growth is something that you do for the rest of your life. On your trip, remember that you have the power to choose and the strength to know yourself. Look for ways to turn problems into learning experiences and failures into chances to make things right. Focus on your health, build up your resilience and take care of your relationships. You can reach your full potential and live a life full of meaning, satisfaction and personal growth if you firmly apply these lessons to your daily life. You will find your own way to success and these ideas will help you get there. So let this be the start of your journey to become the best person you can be as you level up, change and figure out how to be successful. The story never ends. Every day brings new chances to use these trick codes, figure out how to win in the complicated game of life and make it through it all. We will learn about nine types of people who might not deserve your trust and respect in this part of our journey to our dream life. That's not what this is about. It's about being picky about who you let into your close group. Together, let's get through this rough patch and learn how to keep our trust and peace of mind safe. Manipulative people, number one. The deceptive person is the first person we'll look at. 
These are the masterminds of lying, skillfully weaving their web of lies and emotional control. Behind their fake kindness and care, they have a cunning mind that uses others to get what they want. Being sneaky is one of their skills. They don't always make their tricks obvious, which makes it a dangerous game of shadows. How can you find them? Look for gaps between what they say and what they do. They might say great things but not do anything. Their actions don't always match what they say. Watch how they talk about other people, because manipulators like to say bad things about people who aren't there. This can give you an idea of how they might talk about you when you're not there. To get people to feel sorry for them and give them power, they may use guilt trips, gaslighting and playing the victim. They are good at using facts and events in ways that help them, which can make you question what you think you know. Remember that trust is a valuable thing that is always at risk when it comes to manipulators. Their effects go beyond just being disappointing. Being around them for a long time can cause emotional and mental problems. It's very important to follow your gut. If you always feel tired, unappreciated or confused after talking to someone, it could be a sign that they are trying to control you. Setting clear limits is important when working with people who try to control you. Make it clear what is and isn't okay to do in your relationships. Don't be afraid to say no or ask why something doesn't make sense. Additionally, it is important to keep an emotional space. You can be nice, but don't give them personal information or depend on them for emotional support. In some situations, the best thing to do might be to cut all ties, especially if the abuse is really hurting your health. It's not easy, especially if the person is a family member or close friend. It is very important to protect your mental health, though. We are informed of the value of wisdom and emotional resilience in the world of Stoicism. For Stoics, life should be seen for what it is, not how we wish it were. When we know and accept that someone is trying to trick us, we can make smart choices about our relationship with them. As we move on from people who try to trick us, we make room for more honest and healthy relationships where trust is given and accepted with honesty. Stay tuned for the next section where we'll talk about the second type of person. As always, knowledge and awareness will help us navigate the complicated world of human relationships. 2. The Never-Ending Critic Now let's talk about the second type of person you might want to avoid, the person who is always negative. People like this always seem to find something wrong with everything and everyone around them. They often say mean things and criticize all the time. They are always looking at everything, whether it's your decisions, your dreams, or even small things. But what worries me most about people who are always negative is not just their negativity, but also the reasons they have for it. Most of the time when they criticize someone, it's not really about them, but about how insecure they are. They could be putting their worries, fears, or self-doubt on other people. So, how do you deal with people like that? It's important to first tell the difference between helpful criticism, which is meant to help, and damaging criticism, which is only meant to put someone down. Pay attention to why they say what they do as well as what they say. It's best to stay away from them if you think their feedback is mostly unfounded and negative. Dealing with people who are always critical can be tiring. It's like putting positive thoughts into a cup that already has a hole in the bottom. It never seems to be enough. Remember that Stoicism teaches us to pay attention to the things we can change. You can't change what other people say, but you can change how you respond to it. It's important to set limits. Make it clear in a polite but strong way that you are open to helpful feedback, but not to unwarranted negative feedback. If the behavior doesn't change, you might want to reduce your contacts with them. Your happiness and self-worth are too important to let constant criticism hurt them. The constant reviewer teaches us a lot about resilience and self-respect. You can keep your inner peace by deciding not to take their bad moods into yourself. As our research goes on, 
Let's be smart enough to know what feedback to take to heart and what to blow off like the wind. We'll now talk about the third type of person as we continue our journey toward understanding and quiet knowledge. 3. The friend for nice weather. The third type is the fair weather friend, which we find as we continue our search. While things are going well, these people are all happiness and smiles, but when bad things happen, they're nowhere to be found. Their friendship is like a leaf in the wind. It's there when things are going well and not there when things are bad. The fair weather friend is usually nice and friendly, which makes you feel like you're really linked, but their loyalty is only there for a short time. They're there for the happy times, parties and moments of joy, but they're gone when you need help, understanding or someone to just listen. It can be hard to tell who your fair weather friends are, especially when things are going well. You should pay attention to how they react when you tell them about your problems or ask for their help. Are they going to change the subject, make excuses or just leave until the weather gets better? This behavior makes it clear that they are easy to get along with. When dealing with these kinds of people, you need to be both open-minded and careful. It's fine to enjoy their company, but don't lean on them for emotional support or to share your darkest secrets. Stoicism teaches us to value the inner strength and resilience that we all have. If you depend too much on friends who are easy to get along with, you might not be ready for life storms. You should enjoy the good times you have with them, but you should also find people who will always be there for you. These are the friends you can count on to be there for you through good times and bad. They earn your trust and respect. As we move on from the fair weather friend, we're about to meet the fourth type of person on our trip. We learn something useful about ourselves and the world around us from everyone we meet along this path. Stay with us as we continue to make sense of these important discoveries. 4. The person who spreads rumors. Next, we'll talk about the fourth type of person you should avoid, the gossiper. People like this feed off of gossip and hearsay, and they often spread stories that aren't even theirs. The things they say to each other are like a maze of he said, she said, with details about each other's lives that are neither true nor important to them. People who like to chatter often act like they are well informed or up to date. But the truth is that their habit of talking about other people shows that they have bigger problems. It could be because they want attention, want to feel better about themselves, or want to take attention away from their own lives. Two things make it dangerous to talk to someone who spreads rumors. For starters, it ties you into a web of stories that aren't true and could be dangerous. Second, and maybe even more importantly, it shows how your own stories might be handled. It is said, if they talk about you, they will talk about you. So, how do you deal with someone who spreads rumors? It's important not to add fuel to their fire. Be careful about what you tell them and stay away from talks that are all about gossip. If someone starts talking about gossip, a reserved person will either change the subject to something more positive or politely leave the room. People who follow Stoicism are told to think about their own acts and ideals instead of talking about other people. This habit not only keeps us honest, but it also keeps our minds at ease. As we leave the person who spreads rumors behind and move on, let us remember to have talks that make our lives and the lives of others better. On our journey to learn and determine, we will next talk about another interesting personality type. 5. The Selfish Person In the fifth part of our trip, we meet the narcissist. It seems like this person's whole life swirls around them, they often have a lot of charm and confidence, which makes it easy to fall in love with them. But their beauty is just a cover for how self-centered and insensitive they really are. For a narcissist, relationships are just a way to get what they want, which is to feel good about themselves and meet their wants. Their relationships are often one-sided and they don't care about other people's feelings or well-being. 
If you're talking to a narcissist, you might feel like you're always giving them support and praise, but getting almost nothing in return. It can be hard to spot a narcissist because they are good at making themselves look good. But when asked to show understanding or be in a relationship where both people give and take, they show cracks. There are clear signs that they are not interested in other people's lives and that they tend to bring up themselves in every talk. You need a strong sense of self and clear limits to deal with narcissists. It's important to remember that their actions show what kind of person they are, not how valuable they are. If you talk to them with the hope of equal respect and understanding, you will probably be let down. Stoic philosophy teaches us how important it is to focus on our ideals and not let the actions of others upset our inner peace. This piece of advice is especially helpful when dealing with narcissists. We protect our mental and emotional health by keeping our emotional space and not taking what they do personally. Our resilience and knowledge of human nature continue to grow as we move beyond the ego. Come back next time when we'll talk about another personality type that could be having a small effect on your life. Sixth, the nice person. This person has a skill for complimenting others and making them feel good, but their charm usually has a hidden agenda. The flatterer uses compliments to make friends, get what they want, or change things to their benefit. When you first hear that someone admires you, it might feel good, but it's important to tell if the praises are sincere or just a way to get what you want. People who like to flatter tend to go over the top and their praise, while it may seem nice, can often feel fake or excessive. It's risky to talk to someone who flatters you because you might give in to their charm. If someone compliments you, you might not notice their flaws or be willing to give in in ways you usually wouldn't. It's important to keep your cool and not let compliments cloud your judgment. When talking to someone who flatters you, remember to take what they say with a grain of salt. Thank people for their praise but keep a good amount of doubt. Watch what they do, because what they do often speaks louder than what they say. If you notice that fake appraises are being used to control or get favors, it's time to look at the relationship again. Stoic philosophy tells us to value sincere and honest praise more than flattery. By not depending on other people's approval, especially compliments, we keep our freedom and respect for ourselves. We're almost done talking about the flatterer, and in the next section, we'll talk about the seventh type of person. Each character we meet on this trip teaches us something important about how complicated people are and how important it is to know the difference between trust and respect. Seven, the person hurt. This person always feels like bad luck is following them around and that they are powerless over outside events. They make it seem like life, people and events are always against them and treating them unfairly. It's important to feel sorry for people who are going through hard times, but the victim makes this role a big part of who they are and often uses it to get pity or avoid taking responsibility. The problem with the victim is that they won't admit they had anything to do with their situation. They often avoid taking responsibility and blame others for all their troubles. It can be mentally tiring to deal with them because they mostly talk about problems and complaints, leaving little room for positive or helpful conversation. To spot a chronic victim, you have to notice how they tend to put the blame on others and project their problems onto others. Instead of doing anything to change their position, they tend to wallow in how useless they feel. It's important to keep a balance between kindness and self-preservation when working with the victim. It's good to offer support and help, but be careful not to get caught up in their negative loop. Tell them they need to take responsibility for what they did and look for ways to improve their situation instead of just being sad about their situation. Focusing on what we can change, like our actions, reactions and opinions, is an important part of stoic thought. This concept is especially important when dealing with a victim. Even though we can help and guide them, 
they need to take charge of their lives in the end. As we move past the victim, we have the knowledge that kindness is a good thing, but it needs to be paired with knowledge. For our emotional health, it's important to know when to help and when to take a step back. Eighth, those who want. We meet the jealous in part eight. This kind of person is quietly jealous of other people's wins and accomplishments. On the outside, they may seem helpful, but deep down, they are often dealing with jealousy and feelings of not being good enough. Because envy is a mild feeling that doesn't always show itself, it is one of the hardest traits to spot. The person who is jealous might praise you in a sneaky way or play down what you've done. They may also act passive-aggressively or try to find ways to bring down your successes out of envy. It can be hard to spot envy because it often goes unnoticed when someone seems friendly or impressed. Watch how they respond when you do well or share good news. Do their compliments seem genuine or do they always seem to add a bad tone? Do they often talk about how better their work is than yours? Dealing with people who are jealous takes patience and a strong sense of self-worth. Don't let their jealousy make you feel bad about what you've done or bring you down. Enjoy your wins, but be careful about who you tell about them. Even though you might want to tell someone who is jealous about your good news, it might be better to keep it to yourself. Stoics tell us to stay focused on our road and not let other people's bad feelings affect us. We protect our mental and emotional health by keeping our emotional space and not taking what they do personally. As we come to the end of our talk about the jealous, we get ready to talk about the ninth and final type. Each personality type we've looked at has taught us something about how people act and how important it is to pick our friends and family carefully. 9. Who judges? We have now reached part 9, the last part of our study. It is about judging. One thing that defines this person is their tendency to judge others quickly and harshly. They often have strong opinions about the world and don't like people who have different ideas or ways of living. People who are critical quickly name, judge and dismiss others without trying to see things from their point of view. It can be hard to deal with people who are critical because their sharp criticisms are often lacking in humanity and understanding. They might think their way of thinking is the only right one because they have a moral or intellectual superiority complex. Their judgments are not just their thoughts. They are statements that can have an effect on people's relationships and the way society works. To spot someone who is critical, look for signs that their views are rigid and they aren't willing to listen to other points of view. They usually don't want to have a real conversation and would rather force their ideas on other people. It is important to stay true to your beliefs and not let the critical change them when you are around them. Hold on to what you believe and stay out of pointless arguments. The important thing is to accept what they think without taking it personally. You can respectfully agree to disagree without getting too close. Stoic philosophy tells us how important it is to build our character and make decisions based on reason, kindness and understanding. People tell us to keep an open mind and see the value in different points of view. This way of thinking helps us deal with people who judge us without letting their narrow views affect us. Before we end our series on the nine types of people you might not want to trust and respect, it's important to keep in mind that we're not here to judge. It's more about being aware of the people we let into our lives and making smart choices about them. Every one of these personality types teaches us something useful about people and how important it is to surround ourselves with positive, helpful and open-minded people. Thanks for coming along on this interesting trip through the complicated world of relationships. Let's use the knowledge and wisdom we've learned to have better relationships with other people. Remember that the relationships we have have a big impact on our happiness and health. Picking carefully who we trust and respect isn't just a way to keep ourselves safe. 
It's also a way to build a life full of real ties and good times. Let's accept the strength that comes from knowing ourselves and others well in the spirit of Stoicism, the value of true understanding, and the power of emotional resilience. As time goes on, let's use these ideas to build deeper, more important relationships that make our lives and the lives of those around us better. Did you know that most of us watch more Netflix than we think about how much we're worth in relationships? It's crazy, right? It's important to know your worth, but it's not enough to just feel good. It's about changing how people see and treat you. Being able to date like this is like having an ability, but a lot of us don't know we have it. I'm not talking about those overused self-help phrases. I'm getting into something real and honest. It's about seeing your worth from a point of view that has stood the test of time. Stoicism. Yes, Stoicism. You heard me. This old theory isn't just about not feeling anything or putting up with pain. Knowing what's important in life, especially in relationships, is what it's all about. Allow me to show you how to become more calm in order to find out what you're really worth in a relationship. Trust me, this isn't normal relationship advice. It has to do with giving yourself power in ways you might not have thought possible. Let's find out how to make your love life more satisfying, respectful, and powerful. Watch out, because this will change everything. Know how much you're worth. I know what you're thinking. No, not another self-love speech. You might think this is just another look in the mirror and say you're awesome spiel, but bear with me. How does being silent help you know what you're worth in relationships? In fact, a lot. Focusing on what we can control was important to the Stoics. And guess what? You are in charge of your own sense of self-worth. It doesn't matter how many Instagram likes you have or who swipes right on you. It has to do with how you see and respect yourself. Consider this. Picture yourself as a gem. Is it true that not everyone knows how much a rare rock is worth? Some people might not even notice what it is as they walk by. That doesn't change how much the gem is worth, though. It's still expensive, rare, and one of a kind. You are that. If someone doesn't see how valuable you are, that doesn't make you less valuable. Let's get down to business. We've all been turned down and felt like we weren't good enough, especially in this world where everyone seems to be living their best life. And now for the silent twist. Your worth doesn't depend on what other people think of you. It has to do with the good things you do and how you live your life. Are you nice? Are you telling the truth? Are you happy with the way you live? That's where your real worth is. Self-reflection was very important to the Stoics, so take a moment to think about what makes you unique. Not just the obvious things, but also the more important things. What makes you, you? Are you caring, strong, and a good listener? These are the things that make you valuable. More importantly, knowing this deeply and truly changes how you act in relationships. Being too proud doesn't make you put up with nonsense. You respect yourself too much for that. As a tough practice, the next time you feel undervalued, don't fall into self-doubt. Instead, ask yourself, what are the virtues and values I'm bringing to the table? Remember those. There's no need to brag about this. It's about quietly telling yourself that you are worthy, even if no one else agrees with you. One of the great Stoic rulers, Marcus Aurelius, said, You have power over your mind, not over outside events. Know this, and you will be strong. This means that when it comes to relationships, it's about being strong in your own value and self-worth, no matter what other people think. Remember that you don't just know your worth once. It's a process, a trip, something you grow and develop. It means telling yourself every day that you are important for who you are, not what other people think of you. Step two, treat yourself with respect. Now, before you think of a stoic as this serious, unflappable person from the past, let me clear the air. Stoicism isn't about hiding your feelings or not caring about anything. It's about knowing what needs your attention and what doesn't. Also, guess what? 
Your energy should go to how you present yourself. In relationships, let's talk about what it means to treat yourself with respect. Do you know how sometimes we try so hard to please someone that we lose your own identity? We do things like dress and talk in a certain way to get likes. That being said, our stern knowledge tells us that your worth isn't in the things you wear or the cool places you hang out. It shows in how you act, what you do, and the choices you make. Imagine that you are in a coffee shop and see a couple on a date. One person is bright and trying too hard to impress, while the other person is just confident without being over the top. Who do you think makes an impact that lasts? That person must be real, right? That's the power of taking care of yourself with respect. Being honest and having self-respect were very important to the Stoics. In the current world of dating, how does that work? The answer is simple. Be yourself without shame. Own the fact that you get really excited about books. If you're really interested in something, show it. It's not about trying to be someone you're not. It's about being happy and sure of yourself, knowing that you're good enough just the way you are. Taking care of yourself is another important thing. The way you treat yourself determines how other people will treat you. What will happen if you keep putting yourself down? People should feel free to do the same thing to you. It's like Epictetus, another great Stoic philosopher said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. In the context of relationships, it's not just about how you look or what you say, it's about how you react and hold yourself in different situations. Are you acting out of panic or with respect? Do you give up your principles to fit in or do you stand your ground even if it means being by yourself? You don't have to be perfect though. After all, we're all human, so we make mistakes and feel awkward sometimes, but it's how you deal with those times. How do you handle stress? Do you break down or do you keep your head up, learn and move on? Let's stop and think about this. How can we start to treat ourselves with more respect? It could be about setting limits or declining things that don't fit with our morals. Also, maybe all we need to do is be a little nicer and more respectful to ourselves. When you start to respect yourself, the world starts to do the same. 3. Limit who can see it. I know this may sound old-fashioned or even strict at first, but listen to me. It's not about being hard to get. It's about having respect for yourself and knowing what you're worth. What does Stoicism say about this? Stoicism shows us how to be self-disciplined and in charge, but not in a stiff, sad way. It's about being careful with what you give away and knowing what's really important. It's nice to see something different in a world where people want things right away and swipe endlessly. In relationships and dating, we often feel rushed to share everything like our time, space and inner thoughts. However, the Stoics would tell us to take a step back. Why? Because it's natural for things that are easy to get, to lose their value over time. What's the point of being mysterious, deep and exciting if you're always available and say yes to everything? Now let's get down to business. How can you limit access in a polite and calm way? To begin, it's about how you act. It's not just about style to dress beautifully, but simply. It's a message. It tells yourself, I value myself. You're not hiding, but you're also not showing off either. And then there's your time and attention. There's a sense of, I am more than just what meets the eye. Being picky about who gets your time is very useful in a world where we're always linked. You're not supposed to play games. You're supposed to say, my time is valuable and I choose to spend it wisely. When you're with someone, give them your full attention. You should be okay with not being available when you're not though. Focus on your own life, your interests and your growth. To be emotionally stable, Stoicism also teaches us. It doesn't mean you become cold or unattached, far from it. Feeling this way means you don't let small things bother you too much. You keep your cool. You can't just give your emotional energy to anyone. You have to earn it. 
like the time and care you give. I'm not telling you to become a figure of calm. We're all people, and connecting with others is what makes life rich. But there's beauty in taking things slowly, and making a bond that's not just based on getting what you want right away. It's about making something strong and long-lasting. Remember that controlling access isn't about tricks or games. It's about respecting yourself and living by your own standards. Not only through words, but also through deeds. You need to show that you value yourself and are worthy of being respected. To being a little more picky, calm and tough in our relationships, here's to being a little more choosy. It's about finding the right balance between being honest and being careful, between giving and not giving too much. I can tell you for sure that it changes how people see and treat you. That's right, friends. Let's value ourselves and be a little more like the Stoics when we're dating today. 4. Show rules instead of telling them. As you can see, Stoicism puts a lot of weight on actions rather than words. Show me, don't tell me was a big idea for the Stoics, and it's a great way to think about putting limits in relationships. Someone can hear you say what your limits are, but it's a whole other thing to show them through your deeds. Think about it this way. Anyone can say, I won't stand for bad treatment, but the moment of truth comes when you have to deal with it. Do you stick to your limits or do you let them slip? That's where your real strength lies. It's not what you say, but what you do. In no way do I say this is simple. It can be hard, especially when feelings are involved. To remember what our stern friends taught us though, we can choose how to respond to things, not what you say, but how you respond when someone crosses a line sets the limit. If someone lies to you after you've made it clear that you value honesty, for example, how you handle that says a lot. You can show that you're serious about your line by leaving the situation or talking about it quietly and openly, not to cause trouble, but to show that you value yourself enough to act in a way that fits with your beliefs. This way of doing things can really change the way relationships work. People will start to understand what you will and will not accept when they see that you have limits and are ready to stick to them. Having self-respect is important and you should stick to it. Really tough stuff comes next. It's not just about the big things, it's also about the little, everyday rules. In other words, how you act when someone changes plans at the last minute or when someone ignores you. Do you let it go or do you make it clear that this isn't okay with your deeds and words? Practicing mindfulness, which means being aware of the present moment and how you're responding to it, is a way to deal with this. Are the things you do showing your limits? Are you being honest with yourself? Pay attention to the little things, because that's when your limits are really put to the test. Let's try to be a little more calm about setting limits as we go about our day and talk to other people. It's not about being stiff or unwilling to change. It's about having an inner sense that tells you what to do and how to respond. Trust me, people will notice when you start living this way. They start to think of you as someone who sets limits and is strong enough to stick to them. Step five, get ready to leave. There is a beautiful idea in Stoicism called detachment. This doesn't mean being cold or emotionless, but rather knowing what we can and cannot control. We can stay in a bad situation or leave it. This is one of the most powerful things we can do. In relationships, this is where things get real. Yes, we've all been there. When our whole selves are telling us, this isn't what I deserve, we stay. Some people hold on to the hope that things will get better, be afraid of being alone, or fear change. However, the stoic twist is that real power comes from knowing that we have the choice not to stay in a position that goes against our values. This doesn't mean you leave as soon as things get rough, it takes work, flexibility, and patience to be in a relationship. But you have to really know your ideals and worth so that you're ready to walk away when something goes against them. Fortitude means telling yourself, I value myself enough to not accept less than what I deserve. 
Let's look at it in more detail. Self-respect means being ready to leave. You shouldn't give up on your beliefs and sense of self-worth. And this doesn't need to be a big exit. It's okay to make a quiet choice and realize that this isn't right for you. I know it's scary. Unknown things can be scary. But remember our patient friends. They taught us how to be brave in tough situations and how to accept the unknown as a normal part of life. To understand that letting go of something that isn't meant for you is sometimes the greatest thing you can do. Everything is altered by this mindset. For those in a relationship, it's important to know that you're there, not because you're afraid to leave, but because it fits with your values. It changes how things work. You're not there because you need or are afraid. You chose to be there. And here's the best part. When you walk away from things that don't serve you, you make room for things that do. It's like getting rid of old things to make room for new ones. You have to believe that something better is out there for you and give yourself the chance to find it. Let's remember that being ready to leave doesn't mean we're cold or detached. You have to love and respect yourself enough to say, I deserve better. You have to be strong in bad situations because you know your worth isn't tied to other people or things. Actions, not words, should be our main goal. As we've seen, stoicism is all about being wise in real life. It's about rating people by what they do, not just what they say. There are a lot of nice words and empty claims in the world, especially when it comes to relationships. Stoics, on the other hand, tell us to see past that. They teach us to watch what people do, because what people do shows us the truth. Take a look. People can say all the right things, make vows, and paint a picture of a future that looks and sounds great. But do they really do what they say? Do their deeds match what they say? That's where the story really is. Let's face it for a second. Yes, we've all been there. We're blown away when we meet someone and they say such wonderful things about us. Things don't quite line up over time though. They say they'll call, but never do. They make plans, but then back out at the last minute. But the things they say keep us waiting. This is where our tough side needs to shine through. As a Stoic, we learn not to let words or feelings get in the way of our actions. It has to do with being sensible and seeing things as they really are. It's a red flag when someone's deeds don't match what they say. The world is telling us, hey, pay attention, something is wrong here. This way of thinking changes how you deal with relationships. You start to notice the little things instead of getting caught up in love words and vows. What do they do when they're upset? Do they do what they say they'll do? They may say they're there for you, but are they really there for you? Now comes the interesting part. You set a pattern when you pay attention to deeds. People react when you say, I'm not just listening to what you say, I'm watching what you do. They know that they can't just talk their way into your life. They need to show you what they can do. Be careful not to be too skeptical or believe everything everyone says. To keep your heart safe, you need to be smart and have a thick skin of stern knowledge. The point is to stay centered in truth and not let your feelings take over. Being patient and having healthy doubt go hand in hand. Things should be seen for what they really are, not what we think they are. This is what the Stoics taught. Oh boy, this is important when it comes to dating and love. Sure, everyone has seen it. When someone says nice things, we want to believe them so badly that we don't notice the little red flags that are there. But here's where the calm in us comes in. Having a good amount of doubt is like having superpowers. Being grounded and not believing everything you see doesn't mean you're negative or pessimistic. People should watch, ask questions, and not jump in without giving it some thought. Let's draw something. You meet someone who seems great. They're making plans for the future together and saying all these nice things. It's only been a few weeks though, says your cautious stern side. Slow down, 
Let's see if their actions match up with their words. Let's see how things unfold. It's like a reality check, making sure you don't get too caught up in the romance and forget to keep your feet on the ground. Now, this doubt isn't meant to question the other person all the time or question everything they do. It's more about being aware. It means watching what they do as well as hearing what they say. You should take the time to get to know someone well and see if they're reliable and honest. Oh, I see. The Stoics believed that you should use logic and reason instead of just going with your feelings. This is very important in relationships. There are many things we might miss when we let our feelings rule our lives. But when we mix those feelings with some doubt and reason, we can see things more clearly. Also, it's about keeping your heart safe. Being skeptical means you're not going to do something without first being sure about it. You're letting yourself get to know the other person as a person, not just as someone you want them to be. Let's tell ourselves to have some of that patient doubt. It's about being smart, paying attention, and not going too far. It's about caring for our hearts and ourselves. It's not about putting up walls, but about opening doors slowly and carefully. The power of no. In Stoicism, being honest with yourself and having the guts to stick to your beliefs are very important. This is directly about being able to say no in relationships. You should know what you believe in and not be afraid to stick to it, even if it means upsetting some people. Let's draw a picture. You're seeing someone and they make a suggestion that you don't agree with. It could be going too fast or it could be going against your values in some way. The simple way, you should just go along with it, right? But this is where you need to be more patient. It shows respect for yourself, your beliefs and your limits to say no in these situations. Not that I think this is easy. It can be really tough, especially if you like the person. That voice in the back of your mind will always ask, but what if this turns them off? But friend, this is where we need to be brave. Stoicism teaches us how to be brave, not just when we face problems in the outside world, but also when we face problems inside ourselves. It takes self-respect to say no. You should show that you care about yourself enough to not settle for less than what you earn. Yes, there is a chance. They could be lost. But here's the important thing. If turning down an offer that goes against your morals makes someone leave, then maybe that person wasn't right for you in the first place. This way of doing things can really change how a friendship works. People change their minds when they see that you're not afraid to say no and that you're not only there to please them at the cost of your own values. It shows that you respect yourself and value yourself. And I have to say, that looks good. One more stoic twist. Saying no isn't just about setting limits with other people. It's also about being honest with yourself. It's about being clear about what you need and want in a relationship and not giving in to those things. It means not letting the fear of being alone make you do things that aren't good for you. It's okay to say no, let's do that again. It's not only okay, it's important. Much like what the Stoics told us, it's about being honest and having a good life. Building relationships on trust and real connection, not fear and giving in, is what it's all about. Don't chase. We can see how this fits in perfectly with everything we've been talking about when we look at it through our stern view. It's very important in Stoicism to focus on what we can control and let go of what we can't. When it comes to relationships, this concept is very important. To understand that running after someone who is pulling away is not only pointless, but also goes against what we believe in and what we're worth. Let's say you're seeing someone and things are going well. Then they start to move away. Let me tell you something. We've all felt that urge to run after them and try to close the gap. But this is where our stern lessons come in handy. If you ask the Stoics, why are you chasing? What can you control here? The answer is your pride, your peace of mind, and your honor. 
It's impossible to hold on to someone who is pulling away. It doesn't work and makes you feel empty. Instead, being silent means being sure of your own worth. Let someone move away from you if they want to. Realizing that you can't change how someone else thinks or acts is what it means. It's not about being cold or unsympathetic. Let's be honest. It's not easy. It takes a lot of strength to not chase or give in to that urge. Having faith that someone will be with you if they really want to is more important. It's about not lowering your worth based on what other people do or don't do. You're telling yourself, I am worthy, and if you don't see that, someone else will. Everything is altered by this mindset. It gives you back the power. You're no longer subject to someone else's mood swings. You're in charge of your own feelings and decisions. It gives you power, and to be honest, it frees you. It's amazing what happens when you stop chasing and start focused on yourself, your life, and your growth. People who are pulled to your strength, confidence, and self-respect will come to you. This is like giving a message that says, I know I'm worth it. One, when relationships get in the way of your personal growth, it leaves us with a deep message. Friendship that can end was never real. This quote makes us think about what real friendship and family love are all about. In an ideal world, both should be strongholds that support and direct our never-ending search for knowledge and morality. But it's important to know that the relationships we keep up can sometimes take us away from this growth road. When we understand that our emotional ties are pulling us away from our true path, we need to think deeply and honestly about what we are doing. Now is the time to think about and question these links again. This re-evaluation isn't easy. You have to look inside yourself and often have the guts to make tough choices. It might be time to rethink old relationships, ask ourselves how our families work, or even grow apart from friendships that bring us down instead of up. It's a way to learn about and love yourself more than anything else. Important thing to know is that the people we choose to share our trip with have a direct effect on our own growth. Relationships that are healthy and productive are those that push us to improve, pleasantly challenge us, and most importantly, value our core and our life goals. When we're in relationships that seem to get in the way of our progress, it's important to remember Seneca's wise words. We should look for real relationships that can stand the test of time and hardship, help us in our search for knowledge, and most importantly, walk with us toward virtue. It's a path full of new findings, obstacles, and often necessary starts over. Number two, when destructive emotions take over the relationship. To get into the topic of destructive emotions taking over relationships, it's a good time to think about this quote by Marcus Aurelius, who was one of the most famous Stoics. It is very wise of him to tell us, you have power over your mind, not external events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This phrase is a strong reminder of how important it is to keep our emotions and thoughts in check, especially in relationships where anger, jealousy or resentment are present. When these bad feelings happen over and over again and take over our relationships, they can pull us away from our true inner power. They keep us stuck in a loop of unconscious reactions and reactions to things we can't always change. Even though they are normal emotions, anger, jealousy and resentment can keep us from being calm and in control. The challenge is to be aware of these negative feelings and know that we have power over how we respond to them. What Marcus Aurelius shows us is that we can't change the things that happen to us, but we can change how we react to them. To do this, you have to constantly analyze and control yourself, which are important skills for keeping your mental and emotional health in relationships that are hard. It is important to evaluate the nature of a relationship when we realize that it is consistently causing us to experience these bad emotional states. 
It's important to think about whether this relationship is good for our health and growth or whether it keeps us in a steady state of emotional stress. In the end, when we're dealing with negative feelings in our relationships, we need to find the inner power that Marcus Aurelius talks about. This means being patient, understanding and empathetic, but it also means setting healthy limits and, if necessary, ending relationships that keep us from reaching our full intellectual and emotional potential. We learn to value relationships that make us feel good and get away from those that make us feel bad. This is a road of self-discovery and personal strength. Dealing with the problem of manipulation and control in human relationships is very important if you want to understand the Stoic view on liberty, which was stressed by Epicurus, who is one of the most famous thinkers from this school of thought. He gives us advice in a powerful phrase, no one is free who is not master of himself. This saying captures the core of freedom and self-government, which are important for personal growth and well-being. Controlling and manipulating someone in any kind of relationship is a clear sign that their freedom is being taken away. When someone else constantly affects or tells us what to do, think and decide, that is a major violation of our personal freedom. Stoic ideals, which value self-mastery and the freedom of the person, are at odds with this situation. It's important to know how to spot a relationship that is dominating or manipulative. They can show up in many ways, such as constant criticism, low self-esteem, being cut off from family and friends, or even making choices without asking others what they think. People who do these things not only lose confidence in themselves, but they also get stuck in a circle of emotional and mental dependence. The first step to freedom is realizing that you are in a situation that limits your freedom. Epicurus says that being in charge of yourself is the only way to be truly free. This means taking charge of your own life, setting healthy limits, and ending relationships that keep you from having the freedom you need. It can be hard or even painful to decide to end a relationship with someone who is controlling, but it is a brave thing to do and an important step toward taking back control of your life. The path to freedom is one of self-discovery, self-affirmation, and most of all, reaffirming one's own worth and freedom. To sum up, Spotting relationships that control or manipulate us and stepping away from them is a very self-respecting thing to do. Epictetus said that we should try to be in charge of our own lives and build relationships with other people that respect our independence and help us reach our full potential. Fourth, when the relationship does more harm than good, it's important to stress the value of each person's inner well-being when talking about how relationships that do more harm than good work. Individual growth and development is not possible in toxic relationships that drain energy, cause constant emotional pain and create a negative environment. In this situation, it's important to know that a relationship is unhealthy if there is constant stress, unsolved issues, disrespect for each other and a lack of emotional support. These kinds of relationships not only stop people from growing, but they can also make their mental and physical health worse. Toxic relationships often show up in a number of different ways, such as through constant criticism, lack of understanding, manipulation, or even emotional abuse. When these things happen, they make the person feel stuck and unable to move forward in their personal or work life. To find inner peace, you need to be in a place that encourages happiness, respect, mutual support, and most of all, mental and emotional health. When these things can't be done because of a relationship, it's clear that things need to change. If you want to take care of yourself and respect yourself, you should stay away from a poisonous relationship. It might be hard to make this choice, and you might feel guilty or scared about it, but it is an important step toward building healthy, positive relationships that really help your growth and well-being. 
Getting out of a bad relationship is also a time to think about things and learn new things. There is a chance to boost self-esteem, remind oneself of ideals and goals, and learn more about the kind of relationship that makes life more enjoyable. Because of this, it is important to know how to spot a bad relationship and have the guts to leave when you need to. After all, we should make it a goal to improve our inner health and grow as people. The relationships we build are very important in this process. Fifth, mutual respect is very important in relationships, especially since Stoic ideas value honor and self-control. If there is a lack of it, then the relationship is not healthy. These values can't exist in relationships where people don't respect each other. This can create an atmosphere of miscommunication, low worth and constant stress. Respect is the building block of all good relationships. It means recognizing that people are different, being able to listen and see things from the other person's point of view and showing understanding and care. Without respect, it's hard to communicate, disagreements get worse and unity falls apart. When people in a partnership don't respect each other, it often shows up as disrespect, mean comments, not caring about the other person's wants and feelings, or even violent behavior. These views not only hurt the relationship, but they also hurt the people involved self-esteem and emotional health. Stoic lessons tell us how important it is to treat others with respect and self-control at all times. In other words, we should treat others with the same care and respect that we want for ourselves. If a relationship is missing this basic thing, it turns bad and messed up. When there is no equal respect, it is time to look at the relationship and decide what needs to be changed to get things back in balance. This could mean having an open conversation, setting clear limits, or even pulling away, especially if disrespect happens over and over again and can't be fixed. Recognizing when someone doesn't respect you in a relationship and taking steps to fix it or stay away from them is important for your mental health and sense of self-worth. In the end, picking relationships based on mutual respect is the same as choosing a road of self-worth and personal growth that is in line with Stoic ideas of honor and self-control. Sixth, the Stoic method stresses strongly accepting reality as it is, even when the connection makes it hard to do so. This is also true for relationships between people. Having relationships that hold us to false beliefs or help us ignore reality is not helpful and can be very damaging. Stoics say that accepting reality doesn't mean being passive or giving up. Instead, it means having a clear, objective view of the world as it is, without any unrealistic hopes or ideals. When we apply this idea to our relationships, it's clear that keeping connections based on lies or denying facts keeps us from living in a genuine and honest way. We can't really understand ourselves or others when we're in relationships that make us ignore the truth, whether it's through dreams, making excuses for bad behavior all the time, or making up a different reality. We may ignore important problems, make choices based on skewed views, and experience constant disappointment as a result of this detachment from reality. This kind of relationship can have broken promises, high demands, or even problems that aren't being talked about. These events make us want to be angry and unhappy because we are always looking for something that doesn't exist in the real world. It can be hard to face the truth in a relationship, especially when it means giving up ideals that we hold dear. But it's an important step for growing as a person and making relationships that are better and more reasonable. Stoics tell us to accept things as they are, find peace in that knowledge and deal with them as they are. So, it's very important to know how to tell if a connection is based on fantasy rather than truth. Seeing these patterns and stepping back from them can help us find our way to a more genuine and happy life, which is in line with the Stoic ideas of accepting things as they are and having a clear picture of what is real. Seventh, 
If you are giving up your values, living in line with your values is an important part of Stoicism and a key part of living a full and worthwhile life. We are in a tough spot when we are in relationships that make us give up or betray our core values. This is something we should think about and re-evaluate. Our personal values help us make choices, decide what to do, and decide how to connect with the world around us. They show what we really believe and what we think is important and true. When someone in a relationship asks us to give up or ignore these values, it not only hurts our morals, but can also make us feel very unhappy and uncomfortable. There are many ways that a relationship that requires giving up ideals can show itself. It could mean being forced to do something that goes against what we think is right, to put up with behavior that we think is wrong, or even to give up important parts of who we are. At first, these concessions may not seem like a big deal, but they can add up and hurt our self-esteem and sense of self-respect over time. Stoicism teaches us how important it is to live in line with our ideals. This means having the guts to make tough decisions, staying away from things that will take us off track, and looking for relationships that respect and reflect our core values. It's not easy to look at a relationship again in light of how well it fits with our values. It could be caused by inner tensions, loyalty, fear of being alone, or fear of change. But keeping true to your ideals is good for your mental and emotional health and shows that you respect yourself and are real. So, it's important to be aware of how our relationships affect and show what we believe in. When we understand that our core values are being violated, we should really think about whether this relationship is good for our health and growth. Picking ways that are in line with our values is not only a stoic concept, it's also a key part of living a real and satisfying life. Eighth, if the connection isn't mutual, it won't last. In any relationship, reciprocity is important for its health and longevity. Because one person always gives and the other always gets, there is an unbalance that can be harmful and can't last in the long run. Harmonious relationships are ones in which both people give and receive in an equal way. This exchange doesn't have to be exact or right away all the time, but there should always be a feeling of support and cooperation. When one side is always the giver and the other side is always the receiver, there is an imbalance that can make people feel angry, tired and unimportant. This kind of one-sided relationship can show up in many ways, such as emotionally, where one person is always there to support the other and rarely does the same, or practically, when doing daily chores or making big choices. When the mismatch happens all the time, it stops being a team and turns into a problem for one person. If you see signs of a relationship that doesn't work for both people, you should talk about it. This might mean having honest talks about wants and needs, setting new limits and duties, and sometimes rethinking whether the relationship can last in the long run. It's important to keep in mind that self-respect and self-esteem are also at risk in this situation. The idea that you are worthless can be damaged by putting yourself in a constant situation of giving without getting proper value and care. Not only is it fair, but it's also good for you to try to find balance in a relationship. To keep relationships healthy and fulfilling, it is important to seek exchange. Balanced relationships help both people grow, accept each other, and be happy. We should aim for and build these kinds of relationships in our lives for our own health and the health of the people we connect with. Number nine, abuse of any kind is never okay in any kind of interaction. Stoic advice, which stresses how important it is to treat yourself with respect and honor, makes it clear that we should never put up with hurtful or cruel behavior. Abuse can show up in many forms, such as physical, mental, emotional, verbal, or even financial. No matter what form it takes, it is very bad for the mental, physical, and emotional health of the person who goes through it. A pattern of power, 
bullying, separation, and fear can be seen in abusive relationships. Stoicism teaches us to accept and value who we are. This means knowing how valuable we are on our own and not letting anyone treat us in a way that hurts our character or health. Being in a violent relationship is like living in a place that constantly devalues and dehumanizes us, which is the exact opposite of what the Stoics would consider a good and honorable life. The first thing you need to do to get help and change is admit that you are in a violent situation. Understanding that abuse is never okay and that the abuser is responsible for it, not the victim, is very important. In order to get out of this position, you need to get help from friends, family or experts. Leaving a situation where someone is abusing you can be hard and needs strength and support, but it is an important step toward getting back your freedom, self-respect and self-esteem. When you're getting over a violent relationship, you have to remind yourself of your own worth and strength. Because of this, it is very important to know the signs of abuse and act right away to protect yourself. It's important to follow the stoic ideas of self-worth and self-respect on this trip. Everyone has the right to live a life that is free from abuse and treated with respect. Tenth, when communication fails over and over again. Good communication is an important part of any good relationship. When communication fails all the time, whether it's only on one side or causes constant arguments, it gets in the way of peaceful coexistence and shared understanding. Stoic philosophy says that mistakes, frustrations and resentments often happen in relationships where people don't talk to each other enough. When one person controls the talk or doesn't give the other person a chance to say what they want, it's called one-sided communication. In the same way, conversation that is constantly tense and unable to find common ground can be tiring and wearisome. The Stoics respect balance and peace in their own lives and in their relationships with other people. They believe that we should try to understand each other and talk to each other peacefully stay out of fights that aren't necessary and encourage an atmosphere of mutual respect. If these goals depend on good communication, then the best way to improve communication in a relationship is to actively listen, speak clearly and politely, and be willing to talk and understand the other person's point of view. This means being able to talk about problems freely, share thoughts and wants, and work together to find good answers. If conversation regularly breaks down and attempts to make it better fail, the relationship may need to be looked at again. Sometimes getting help from a professional, like a couples therapist or psychologist, can help you get past these communication problems. So, keeping up healthy and useful conversation is essential for any relationship to stay healthy and last a long time. In line with Stoic beliefs of balance and mutual understanding, this is an important part of both personal well-being and building healthy, meaningful relationships. Eleventh, if the relationship makes you feel less calm, end it. Inner calm and peace are important parts of the Stoic theory, and keeping them is key to living a full and healthy life. When relationships make us feel uneasy all the time, it's a clear sign that we need to carefully question these relationships and, if necessary, re-evaluate them or even end them. St. Augustine said that people should try to find peace and relationships that cause constant internal turmoil through arguments, stress, worry or fear are not in line with this. The Stoic theory teaches us to value emotional balance and stay calm inside even when things are hard outside. A relationship that causes a lot of stress makes it harder to reach this state of peace. In the long run, it can make us feel bad emotionally, which can hurt our mental health and make it hard to enjoy life and do things that matter. In this case, it's important to think about how the connection affects our health. This means thinking about how the relationship makes us feel mentally whether there is a pattern of negative that can't be fixed, 
and whether our efforts to make the relationship better have been in vain. It is never easy to end a relationship, especially when there are strong feelings involved. Stoic thought, on the other hand, tells us to make choices that are good for our health and peace of mind. In this case, we might need to get away from relationships that are making us feel bad. It's important to remember that looking for peace is not greed. It's an important step for staying alive and living by our better ideals. So, when we're in relationships that keep upsetting our peace of mind, we should be brave enough to make hard decisions, always aiming for inner balance and peace. The first and greatest victory is to conquer oneself, Epictetus said. When we think about how deep and wise those words are, we realize that the end of a relationship is not a failure, but a brave step toward truthfulness and personal wisdom. Even though it will be hard, this path is a chance to grow and remember our most important ideals and principles. Remember that every choice we make is brave and deep in our hearts, especially those that help us leave bad situations behind. Taking on this conservative path not only protects our health, but it also leads to a better, more satisfying life. Do you ever think about how you agreed to something you didn't want at first and question your decision? Have you ever thought about why some talks make you feel like you're not sure what you're saying? You might be being influenced in a sneaky way and not even be aware of it. In this world where everything is linked, we're always talking to new people, each with their own goals and ways of doing things. Most of the time, these exchanges aren't harmful and can even be helpful. The question is, what happens when other people's goals aren't clear and their actions are dishonest? We're going to talk about the complicated and often secret world of influence. This is a very important part of this guide. It's an awakening, a trip to learn about the 10 most subtle and powerful types of influence and, most importantly, how to protect yourself from them. Why is this information so important? In this day and age, influence comes from more than just the people around us. It also comes from media and social networks, which are everywhere. Learning these skills isn't just a way to keep yourself safe. It's also a way to gain more independence and freedom. I'm going to show you how to spot and stop these tricks. They range from gaslighting, which makes you doubt your reality, to emotional manipulation, which plays with your inner feelings. We'll figure out these strategies together, giving you the tools to stay in charge and make choices that are in line with your wants and needs. The first type is emotional manipulation. Mind control is like an unseen chess game, with your feelings as the pieces and your mind as the board. Imagine going through a magical forest where each tree stands for a different feeling, like fear, guilt, or happiness. Someone could shake any of these trees to throw you off balance. To begin, it's important to know that emotional influence isn't always clear. A lot of the time, it looks like care, love, or even a heavy silence. They are like a skilled magician who knows how to take your attention away from what they're doing so you don't see it. This process starts with small words or actions that don't seem harmful at first but build up over time to make you question yourself and be afraid. Making people feel guilty is a common trick. Imagine that a friend asks you to do something that you feel is awkward or risky. I thought we were friends, they say with a sigh of sadness and a look that says more than words. Suddenly you question your choice, feeling selfish for putting your own needs ahead of theirs. Fear is another covert method of emotional control. Though they might not say it, someone might imply that something bad might happen if you don't do what they say or follow their advice. That person controlling you is like being in a dark room where the only light comes from them. You have to count on them for help and direction. How can you protect yourself from these moves? Being aware of yourself is the first step. Spend some time getting to know what makes you crazy 
scared, angry, or happy. You need to know every feeling that grows inside you, like a farmer knows every plant in their garden. You'll be able to tell when someone is trying to play with them after this. Setting clear limits is the second step. Building a wall around yourself that can't be broken through isn't what this means. What it means is having doors that you can open and close whenever you want. Don't feel bad when you say no and know that you can't always make everyone happy. Step three is to try to keep your relationships in order. A good relationship is like dancing. Both people move at the same speed and treat each other with care. If you feel like you're always following someone else's lead, you should think about ending that connection. Last but not least, never forget how powerful, honest conversation can be. It can be hard to talk to someone who is mentally manipulating you, but sometimes just saying, I feel this way, or I'm not comfortable with that, can work. People who know how to manipulate feelings are very good at it. But you can learn to protect your emotions by being aware, setting clear limits, finding balance, and talking to others. In the chess game of life, remember that you control your own fate. Form number two, watch out for logical mistakes. Watch out for points that make sense but are based on false premises, like making personal attacks or broad statements. Thought errors are like mirages in the desert when it comes to arguments. They look like a safe place to stay and the truth, but as you get closer, they disappear, leaving only lies and confusion behind. A logical error happens when a case doesn't have a sound base, even if it seems fair or convincing at first glance. Being able to spot these errors is important for getting through everyday conversation and keeping yourself safe from minor trickery. One type of error that is often used is the personal attack, which is called ad hominem in Latin. When someone's character or personal traits are attacked instead of their case, this is what happens. Imagine that you are arguing about politics with someone, but instead of answering your points, they start criticizing your background or schooling. It's like someone chose to play unfair by putting sand in your eyes to make you blind and keep you from seeing what's really going on. The quick assumption is another common mistake. A small sample or a person's own experience is used here to talk about a whole group. It's like thinking that all birds fly south after seeing one fly south. This error is based on beliefs and assumptions, and it makes it easy for discrimination and confusion to happen. Another fallacy is the slippery slope fallacy, which says that a small first step will always cause a chain of bad things to happen. It's the same as saying that if you let your child stay up late one night, they will always have trouble sleeping. This error plays on people's fear of what might happen in the future by making effects seem worse than they really are. To stay safe from these false beliefs, you should first learn more about them. Being able to recognize their forms and how they act in talk is like having a map in this land of mirages. Is it really addressing the central point? Is it based on solid evidence or assumptions? It is also important to learn how to think critically. If you want to find the truth, don't just believe what you hear. Instead, ask, examine, and look for the proof behind the claims, like a detective. Don't believe what you see. Finally, learn to spot these mistakes and stay away from using them in your cases. You can help have a more honest and useful conversation if you stick to facts and logic when you talk. To put it simply, being aware of logical errors is like having a guide in a sea of ideas that are hard to understand and often lie. In this way, it keeps you on the road of reason and truth, keeping you from falling for points that look like gold but are really just air. Form 3. How to spot gaslighting. Know when someone is trying to get you to question what you think or what is real. Mental trickery also known as gaslighting, is a sneaky way to get someone to do what you want them to do emotionally. In this kind of manipulation, the person trying to trick someone tries to make them question their memory, vision, or reasoning. 
like someone moving your furniture around slowly in your house and then telling you nothing has changed, which makes you question what is real. This strategy can look different ways. One of the most common is denial, in which the liar just won't accept the truth or says your experiences aren't real. It's like saying you saw a shooting star, but someone says you must have been fantasizing even though you are sure you saw it. Changing the facts is another way to gaslight someone. The trickster might change the truth to make you question what you remember. For instance, if you remember a talk where you both agreed on something, the trickster might say it never happened or that they said something completely different. It's like being in a maze of mirrors where each one changes the truth a little more. It's also possible for gaslighting to happen when your feelings and thoughts are made fun of or put down. Telling you you're making a big deal out of a small matter is like telling someone you're really upset or hurt about something. It is important to trust your gut and your emotions to spot and stop gaslighting. It's likely not right if something doesn't feel right. Write down what happened, what you said, and how you felt. This could be a notebook or your phone's notes. Keeping a record of facts can help you back up what you say and remember the exact details. Also, ask friends or family members you trust for help. Talking to someone who isn't involved in the situation can often help you see things more clearly and confirm what you're going through. Self-affirmation and self-care are also very important. Feel good about yourself and remember that you deserve to have your own thoughts, feelings and experiences. For keeping your emotional health, meditating or talking to a doctor can be very helpful. As an emotional trick, gaslighting can make you question what you know to be true. Learning about how it works and coming up with ways to trust your own view are important things you can do to protect yourself from this harmful strategy. Don't forget that your world is real and should be taken into account. Form 4. Being aware of group pressure. Figure out when pressure from other people in the group is being used to change your mind or choices. Group pressure is strong and can show up in obvious or covert ways, having a big effect on our choices and views. Many times it feels like we're traveling on a rough sea where the waves of public opinion could take us where we don't want to go. This kind of social trickery takes advantage of the fact that we all want to fit in and be accepted by a group. To fit in, you might just change how you dress, or you might have to change your views or actions to match those of the group. We follow the group, even if it takes us down a road we don't want to take, so we don't stand out as the black sheep. It's important to have high self-esteem and confidence in order to stay aware and fight peer pressure. An anchor in a rough sea is knowing who you are and what you value. It keeps you steady even when the waves try to pull you away. You can also learn to tell when someone is trying to affect you. Group pressure can be clear, like when someone tells you straight out to do something. Sometimes it's more subtle, like when everyone in your social group agrees with you or lives a certain way and you feel like you have to follow suit. It's like being in a place where everyone talks in the same tone and you have to change the way you speak to fit in. It's important to learn the skill of saying no. Setting and sticking to limits is very important. Being strong and clear about your choices will help you stay true to yourself. You don't have to be rude or angry. Think of yourself as a tree with deep roots. Your roots hold you down even when the wind blows hard. Also, look for a support group that treats you as a unique person. Finding people who respect different points of view and back your own choices is like finding a safe place where you can be yourself without worrying about being judged or put under pressure. Finally, choose what to do based on your own morals and ideals not what other people think is right or popular. This may mean going the path less taken at times, but it's necessary to live a real and satisfying life. To stay true to yourself and make choices that are in line with your values and beliefs, you need to be aware of group pressure and learn how to deal with it. Remember that it's okay to be unique 
and choose your own path, even if it means not always going with the flow. Form 5. Recognizing too much flattery. Watch out for people who use charm to get you to trust them and then use it against you. Too much praise, that rain of comments that seems harmless, can be a very clever way to get what you want. It's like a tasty appealing bait with a hook hidden inside. When someone compliments you all the time, it's simple to get caught up in the pleasure and not notice that they're setting you up for more subtle manipulation. This way of tricking us plays on our egos and our need to be liked and respected. As if someone were to give us a magic mirror that only shows the best parts of ourselves, making us forget to look deeper. But it's important to remember that when compliments are too much or don't match up with reality, they probably have a reason behind them. The first thing you should do to avoid falling for the trap of excessive praise is to have good self-esteem and an honest opinion of yourself. When you know your skills and flaws, you can use them to judge the compliments you get. Being able to tell when you're on real ground and when you're exaggerating is like having a mental navigation system. It's also helpful to pay attention to the situation and how often the praises are given. If someone hails you because they want something from you, or if they do it a lot, there are probably ulterior reasons. People who offer you a sweet every time they need a favor make you wonder if they really like you or are just trying to get something from you. When you think praise is too much, keep a healthy emotional space. Thank them politely, but don't let the praise get to you. Like having an umbrella on a sunny day, it may not seem like you need it, but it keeps you safe in case it starts to rain. Ask people you trust what they think. Sometimes an outside view can help you figure out if the compliments are real or just a way to get what you want. It's like having extra eyes that help you see things you might not see on your own. Lastly, learn the difference between praises that are real and ones that are meant to trick you. Sincere compliments are usually specific and appropriate for the situation, while too much flattery is usually general, unclear, and unfair. If you praise someone too much, it can be a quiet but effective way to control them. Maintaining emotional space, having a healthy sense of self-worth, and being critical of compliments are all ways to keep yourself from being influenced and keep your relationships based on honesty and mutual respect. For the sixth form, you need to recognize isolation tactics. Watch out for cases where someone tries to keep you from your family, friends, or co-workers. Isolation is one of the most sneaky and effective ways to control someone. The manipulator makes you more weak and dependent by cutting you off from your support networks, like friends, family, and co-workers. This makes it easier for them to control you. Picture yourself on an island by yourself with no one else around. The person who left you there is the only one who can help you. To spot this strategy, you need to pay attention to changes in your relationships, whether they are small or big. The trickster might start to make you doubt your friends and relationships, making you wonder if they are telling you the truth or are loyal as if they put a magnifying glass over every little crack in your relationships and made them bigger until they were huge. They might also be more direct, like telling you to spend more time alone with them or blaming and putting down the people around you. It feels like they're putting up a wall around you, brick by brick, making it impossible for you to see or get to the outside world. To fight back against these strategies, it's important to keep up with your support networks and relationships, even if someone tries to get you to stop. Keeping in touch with family and friends on a daily basis is like having lifelines that keep you grounded and give you new views. Setting and sticking to clear limits is another approach. If someone tries to control who you hang out with or how you spend your time, you need to be strong and make your limits clear. It's kind of like making a fort where you decide who can and can't go. Having faith in your gut is also important. 
there's likely some truth to your feeling that something is wrong with how someone is affecting your relationships. As a way to protect our health and safety, our instincts work like an internal alarm system. Last, look for help from outside sources. If you feel like you're being left alone, talking to a counselor, therapist, or even a trusted friend can help you see things more clearly and confirm what you already know. For your emotional health and independence, it's important to be aware of separation methods. You can keep your lines of communication open and trust your gut to keep yourself from being alone and controlled. This will also make sure that your relationships are healthy, fair, and based on equal respect. Form 7. Be on the lookout for ultimatums. Figure out when someone is using a threat to get you to make a quick choice. When used for trickery, ultimatums are like being on the edge of a cliff. You feel like you have to make a choice that seems easy, but is actually very scary. Manipulators use ultimatums to make you feel like you need to make a choice right away, which limits your choices to what they want. Being aware of when choices are made in an extreme way is necessary to spot this strategy. For example, if you really loved me, you would do this, or if you don't do this, then our friendship will end. These are like red lights that mean someone is trying to control your behavior by putting pressure on you. One important thing about ultimatums is that they often seem sensible at first, but when you look more closely, they show that the person doesn't value your needs and limits. If you put on sheep's clothes, it might look like something good at first, but it's actually something much worse. When faced with an option, it's helpful to take a deep breath and fight the urge to give in. You might feel like you need to decide right away, but remember that you usually have more time than you think. This is like hitting the pause button in a computer game. It gives you time to think about what you want to do and gather your thoughts. Also, think about what will happen if you choose each choice. Ultimatums are often used to make one choice seem much worse than the other. However, if you look at the long-term effects, you might find a road that fits your values and wants better, like looking at a map before picking a route. It helps you see all the possible routes and what might happen if you go in each one. One more thing you can do is make your thoughts and limits known. You can reaffirm your independence by saying how the threat makes you feel and what you are and aren't ready to do. You can think of it as putting your feet firmly on the ground to show that the wind doesn't bother you. Finally, if you're in a relationship and the other person keeps giving you ultimatums, it might be time to think about ending that connection. It's not healthy or polite for people to be threatened or told they have to act a certain way. You need to be aware of ultimatums and learn how to handle them well if you want to keep your freedom of choice and make choices based on what's best for you, not what someone else is trying to force you to do. Stay cool, think about your choices, and let them know what your limits are. These are important steps to follow when giving a deadline. Form 8. Figuring out who is to blame. It's clear that someone is trying to make you feel bad in order to control what you do or think. It's a sneaky but effective way to control you, like a drug that slowly gets into your head and makes you question yourself and your choices. To figure out who is to blame, you need to be able to tell when someone is trying to make you feel bad all the time for their actions or feelings. Someone might say something like, you make me feel bad when you don't do what I ask, or if you hadn't done that, I wouldn't have reacted this way. It's like having a skewed mirror that sees all of your actions as mistakes or flaws. To fight blame, it's important to stand up for your own truth and remember that your thoughts and feelings are real. Do not let anyone change the plot of your story or make you feel guilty for things that are not your fault. It's like having a shell around you that keeps you safe from the poisoned bullets of guilt. A good approach is to think about yourself before you accept blame. Checking to see if you are really to blame, and if the charge is true, is like looking at a plan before you go on a trip to make sure you are going in the right direction. Talking to each other is also very important. 
Say what you think when someone wrongfully blames you and be clear about what your limits are. You could say something like, I know you're upset, but I'm not responsible for what you did. This is like putting a do not enter sign in your emotional yard. In addition, it's important to be around people who are kind and helpful. Instead of rough ground where nothing can grow, a healthy and happy setting is like rich dirt that lets your best grow. In conclusion, finding blame is important for keeping your mental and emotional health. You can keep yourself from being influenced and make sure that your actions and thoughts stay yours, free from the shadow of unfair guilt, if you recognize this strategy and deal with it. To stay safe in the maze of blame, keep your mind clear, your limits strong, and your surroundings healthy. Form 9. Being aware of too much information. Watch out for cases where you have too much information that is often hard to understand or complicated. This can make it harder for you to make clear choices. Too much information is like having a storm in your head. Picture yourself in the middle of a storm of numbers, facts and data coming at you from all sides. This could leave you feeling lost, stressed and eventually unable to make smart, well-informed choices. This method of influence works by giving you so much information that you can't see the big picture. These tricks are used by manipulators to throw you off balance, which makes you more open to their requests or effects. They want you to give up and let them take charge, like being given a puzzle with too many parts. To keep yourself safe from this information storm, you should first be able to tell when you have too much data. You should take a moment to breathe if you find yourself in a situation with too much information. It's like stopping a crazy movie in the middle to figure out what's going on. Then, try to make the information easier to understand by splitting it up into smaller pieces that are easier to handle. It's like taking apart a complicated engine one piece at a time, which makes it easier to understand and use. To get good results, you can also ask questions. Clearing up questions can get rid of the fog of misunderstanding. Don't be afraid to say, I don't get it. Could you explain it another way? It's like asking someone to light a flashlight in a dark room. Also, get views or tips from people outside the company. Talking to a neutral third party can help you see things from a new and objective point of view. It gives you a clear picture of the scenery, like looking at a map from above. Last but not least, trust your gut. If something is too much or makes no sense, it might mean that someone is trying to trick you. It's like an internal sensor that lets you know about possible threats. Being aware of information overload is important if you want to keep your independence and ability to make choices. You can stay calm in the middle of a lot of information by noticing it, making it easier to understand, asking questions, and getting help. This will help you make choices that are truly yours. You should always remember that your mind is your most important defense in a world where knowledge is power. Form 10. Figuring out when the topic shifts. Keep track of when someone changes the subject all the time to avoid taking blame or to confuse you. Switching the subject is like a magic trick in a talk. You're talking about an important issue one minute, and then the subject changes to something completely different, which can be confusing and make you feel lost. This is a subtle but effective way to control people and take their attention away from touchy or embarrassing subjects. You could compare it to being on a clear road and then getting lost in a maze of talks that don't lead anywhere. Misdirection is a game that manipulators are very good at. When pushed or asked about something, they quickly change the subject to avoid taking blame or being looked at closely. Like a dancer doing a fancy step to stay off of the ground, that could be dangerous. The first thing you need to do to stay grounded during these verbal turns and twists is to notice when they're happening. There might be a problem if the subject moves quickly and without a rational link, it's like waking up and seeing that the scenery has changed all of a sudden. When the talk goes off track, try to bring it back to the original subject. 
That's like a captain putting their ship back on track after taking a break. You could say something like, that's interesting, but I'd like to get back to what we were talking about before. Remember to stay cool and strong and don't let unimportant topics carry you away. You have to keep your balance when there are strong winds. If the topic change keeps happening, ask directly what the goal is. You could ask, why are we changing the subject? Putting on a light in a dark room is like that. It shows what is being covered. Lastly, make sure there are clear limits on how you can communicate. It's fine to end the talk if you think it's not going anywhere or is constantly going off track. It's like knowing when to leave a game where the rules aren't being followed. Figuring out when to change the subject is important for keeping conversation honest and open. By noticing, refocusing and asking about these changes, you are standing up for your right to a polite and useful discussion. Always keep in mind that keeping on topic is just as important as learning how to get around. We have looked at a variety of bad ways that people try to change our choices, feelings and views as we have gone through the 10 ways to spot and deal with manipulation. Each tactic, from emotional manipulation to topic switching, shows how manipulators work and how we can protect ourselves to keep our independence and honesty. Remember that being aware is the strongest defense we have. When people try to trick us in our daily lives, Knowing these tricks helps us spot them and stop them. It's like having a map in a dangerous place to help us get home safely. Different types of manipulation can happen in different parts of our lives, such as in personal relationships, at work, or even in public. But if we have the right information and skills, we can face these problems head on and keep our thoughts and feelings safe from harmful effects. Stoicism tells us that you can not only get smarter, but also grow smarter through hard work, self-reflection and knowledge. Seneca once said, it is the power of the mind to be unconquerable. Each method we look at is a way to improve your unconquerable mind, which will turn your knowledge into wisdom and your wisdom into a good life. 1. Actively listen and look for different points of view. The first step to using our mind to its fullest is to learn how to listen well. To really listen though, you have to go beyond just hearing words and really connect with the thoughts, feelings and experiences that are behind them. This kind of deep involvement helps us think and understand things in new ways, which is a key part of getting smarter. Epictetus said, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. This shows how important it is to listen more and talk less, which is a central idea in Stoic thought. Think of a time when a chat helped you see things in a new way. This is what active hearing is all about. It's an important mindful practice that makes us smarter and better able to understand others. Think about how much more we understand when we listen to someone from a different background or country. Their experiences teach us things that make us think about things in new ways. We're not just gathering knowledge when we actively listen and look for different points of view. We're changing the way we think. Getting smarter is easy when we learn new things and understand things better. The Stoics believed that people should learn from all kinds of thoughts and situations. They thought that real knowledge comes from being open to and involved with different points of view. Talking with an open mind, asking deep questions and being open to new or different ideas are all parts of this. Every contact is not only a chance to hear different points of view, but also a chance to really understand them and add them to the way we think. This helps us think of new ideas, figure out how to solve problems and become more flexible and strong. This method doesn't just make us smarter, it changes us by making us more intellectually humble and empathetic. So let's bring the stoic spirit into our daily conversations by listening carefully and appreciating different points of view. This isn't just a theory, it's a way to live a fuller, smarter life 
full of different ideas and deep knowledge. 2. Accept that you are always learning and being curious. Stoicism says that the search for information is a path that never ends. It's not just about learning facts or getting to a certain level of schooling. It's about being committed to learning new things all the time and keeping your interest alive. This view of intelligence isn't just about getting a better grasp on the world. It's also about changing ourselves. Consider the path of a great business owner who, despite their success, still goes to training and classes on a regular basis to develop their skills. Their story is a strong lesson that learning never ends, even when you've reached your goal. It's an ongoing process where each new skill and piece of information builds on the last, paving the way for more growth and development. Let's look at how this stoic concept can be used in our everyday lives. To begin, see your daily life as a blank surface on which you can learn. Every job and conversation is a chance to learn something new. There's always something new to learn, whether you're making food, talking to someone, or doing nothing. When you do these everyday things, ask yourself, what can this teach me? Everyday activities that help you keep learning could also be a part of your life. For example, you could set aside one day a week for a digital detox. Taking a break from the digital world lets you connect with your surroundings more deeply and gives you a new way to look at learning. Taking up a new sport that tests your imagination and problem-solving skills is another good idea. It could be anything that speaks to you, like farming, art, or code. These kinds of tasks not only make you smarter, but they also make you happy and give you a sense of success. Another very helpful thing you can do is keep a learning log. Every day, at the end of the day, write down something new you've learned, no matter how small, and think about how it could help you. This easy activity helps you remember what you've learned and makes you more likely to use it carefully. Reflection is important, as Stoicism says. It's good to think about what you've done because it helps you remember things and understand them better. Seneca said something very wise. No one was ever wise by chance. We become wiser by actively seeking knowledge and rewarding our interest. Let's keep in mind the power of learning new things as we go about our day. Let's stay interested, keep asking questions, and enjoy the never-ending process of learning new things. Remember that in the world of Stoicism, intelligence is not a fixed quality, but a process that changes over time. It's about changing, responding, and making our minds and souls better all the time. Here's a task for you. This week, think of a subject that has always interested you, but that you have never looked into further. Spend some time getting to know it. 3. Take on tasks and figure out what went wrong. When you're going through life, problems aren't just problems. They're also great chances to learn and grow. Stoicism teaches us to see pain not as a problem, but as a way to grow as people. It's often when things are hard that we find the seeds of knowledge. Imagine that things don't go as planned, even though you've planned them out carefully. Focusing on the positive instead of the negative can help us see these times as lessons that we can learn from. What can I learn from this? That's the question that every problem brings up. By choosing this mindset, we turn our challenges into stepping stones that lead to more success and personal development. A wise man named Marcus Aurelius once said, what stands in the way becomes the way. This powerful thought tells us that it's not the lack of difficulties that shapes our journey, but how we deal with them. We develop resilience and flexibility by meeting challenges head on and learning from them. When you face problems, ask yourself, what is this teaching me? And see these times as chances to get smarter and better. Don't think about each mistake with sorrow. Instead, use them to help you make decisions in the future. Instead of trying to get rid of pain, this conservative way of thinking turns it into a tool for personal growth. Now, when you have failures, 
Don't see them as dead ends. Instead, see them as doors that lead to new ways of learning and resilience. Being smart doesn't mean never failing. It means getting back up after every fall with new ideas and a better soul. Remember that every mistake is a lesson that teaches us how to be smarter and stronger. Think about a problem or mistake you made not long ago. What did it do to help you grow? What new knowledge did it give you that makes you smarter? Think about this and see how it fits with the calm way of seeing problems as chances to grow. Remember that your path of learning and resilience is an ongoing adventure that keeps your mind and spirit sharp all the time. 4. Improve your self-reflection and mindfulness. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher, once said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Therefore, guard accordingly and take care that you entertain no notions unsuitable to virtue and reasonable nature. This quote supports our next technique, which is to practice mindfulness and self-reflection. Being truly self-aware doesn't happen very often in our busy lives, but it's in these times that we discover how to become smarter. Mindfulness means taking a moment to notice our feelings and thoughts, even when things are going crazy. It's the skill of living in the present and being aware of everything around you. Next, picture yourself in a tough spot, like a fight or a stressed day at work. Imagine stopping, taking a deep breath and thinking about what you want to do instead of moving without thinking. With just a moment of mindfulness, you can change how you react, making choices that are more deliberate and well thought out. This is complemented by self-reflection, which lets us think about the past and learn from it. It's not about focusing on the past, but about learning from it so that you can handle the future better. We can become smarter, not just more informed, through regular self-reflection. Take a look at a day when things didn't go as planned. In the evening, you think about what happened. This self-reflection shows you a trend in how you behave and helps you figure out how to handle similar scenarios better in the future. So try this easy habit. When the day is over, take a few minutes to think about what happened, what you learned, and how you can use what you've learned in the future. Self-reflection is a good trait that will not only make you smarter, but also give your life more meaning and understanding. When we practice mindfulness and self-reflection, we don't just get smarter, we start a journey of deep emotional growth. Five, get your mind and body in sync. Have you ever found that yourself finds it difficult to stick to your workout schedule or craves junk food after a long, hard day? You may have also had days when you stay up late and felt even more tired the next morning how come it seems so hard to live a good life when we're so busy? The Stoics thought about this very same problem many hundreds of years ago. They understood the deep link between having a healthy body and a sharp mind. Epictetus said, First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. These words not only show how important it is to make sure that our actions are in line with our mental and physical health, but they also remind us that this balance is essential for getting smarter. When our days are full of things to do and due dates, it's easy to forget about our physical health. Still, it's important to keep your mind and body in balance. After all, having a good body keeps your mind sharp. It's not enough to just do some workouts or eat healthy foods once in a while. You need to make a habit that supports your general health. Imagine beginning your day with a quick workout or a fast walk. This physical action gives you energy and health for the rest of the day, which has a direct effect on how focused and sharp your mind is. In the same way, making good food choices and getting enough sleep are not just self-care. They are investments in your resilience mentally and emotionally. Mind and body are deeply connected. A strong base for mental clarity and emotional calm is built when you take care of your physical health. This balance is important for staying relaxed and clear when facing problems. Consider your present way of life and ask yourself, 
How can I better balance my physical and mental health? What small step can I take today to move toward a more healthy way of life? It could be working out for 30 minutes, eating better, or having a regular bedtime to get a good night's sleep. People are often surprised by how small, regular changes can make a big difference in how they think, feel, and perform. By following the stoic concept of balancing mind and body, we not only get smarter, but we also live a healthier, wiser life. To not only survive but also thrive in the modern world, you need to take this attitude. 6. Take part in thoughtful practice. Stoicism shows us how important discipline and hard work are for brain growth. This is where the idea of deliberate practice comes in handy. It's not just doing the same thing over and over again. It's a mindful way to improve your skills that includes games, puzzles, and learning new ones. Deliberate practice is a serious way to learn that goes beyond just learning. It means keeping your mind active by doing things that require you to focus and figure out solutions. Picture yourself getting really into a hard puzzle or a strategy game. These things aren't just fun. They're also good for you because they work out your brain and make it smarter. The Stoics knew how important it was to keep their minds active and sharp. People who regularly do mentally challenging tasks not only learn new skills, but also strengthen their brain resilience. Focus, discipline and persistence are all things that are needed to learn a new language, get good at playing an instrument, or solve hard tasks. To put this into action, start by thinking about the things that interest you. A daily crossword task, a tough board game, or even a new sport that makes you think strategically could be just what you need. Consistency and a desire to stretch oneself beyond one's comfort zone are essential. Working hard over and over again is the only way to achieve real greatness and understanding. It is not because things are hard that we do not dare, it is because we do not dare that they are hard, Seneca said. These words perfectly describe the heart of careful practice. In this method, you're not just practicing your skills, you're also practicing the stoic traits of courage, focus and resilience. You'll see a huge change in your personality and brain skills if you keep pushing yourself and getting out of your comfort zone. This trip will not only make you smarter, but it will also help you grow as a person. Remember that careful practice not only sharpens your mind, but it also gives you the tough spirit of self-improvement and makes you ready to face life's obstacles with a strong mind. 7. Control your feelings so you can make smart choices. Have you ever found yourself reacting without thinking when you were stressed at work? Or perhaps responding to a family fight and then feeling bad about the choices they made at the time? Emotions can make it hard to think clearly, which can cause us to make hasty and often bad choices. Stoicism teaches us that controlling our feelings can help us make better decisions when these things happen. Even though feelings are a normal part of being human, they can get in the way of clear thought sometimes. The Stoics thought it was important to be aware of our feelings without letting them rule us. This practice is very important for building a clear, calm mind that can make smart choices. To get control of your feelings, take a moment to think before you decide what to do. This space gives you a chance to think about your choices more carefully. Writing in a journal can help you a lot with this process. It can help you understand and share your feelings, which can lead to more understanding. Also, when your feelings are high, pay attention to your breathing. This easy method can help you calm down and be less impulsive. Getting different points of view is another good approach, especially when making decisions. Hearing different points of view can help you keep your feelings in check and help you understand things better, which can help you make better choices. Remember Seneca's wise words. Here, we are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more from imagination than from reality. 
This serves as a good reminder that our emotional responses are frequently stronger than necessary. Taking control of our feelings helps us make decisions with a clear head and in line with our morals and intelligence. You develop the stoic values of self-control and reason as you practice emotional management in addition to making better choices. Ultimately, this journey helps you make decisions that are in line with your real goals and show that you have gained more understanding and knowledge. It also improves your decision-making skills and helps you grow as a person. Eighth, be good and honest in your daily life. It's not just about what we know when we want to get smarter. It's also about how we live. Stoicism is more than just a way of thinking about ideas. It's also a way of living. It puts a lot of weight on ideals like bravery, fairness and moderation and says that we should base all of our actions on these traits. Imagine dealing with the problems you face in life, not only with information, but also with a moral guide. It's about making decisions that are not only smart, but also right when you follow these ideals. This matching of actions with virtue makes our choices not only smarter, but also more important and moral. So, how can we live our daily lives with these virtues? Make some small, thoughtful choices to begin with. Before you decide what to do, stop and ask yourself, is this action fair? Am I facing this challenge with courage or am I avoiding it? This will help you make choices that are in line with the stoic ideals of courage, justice and moderation. In stoicism, courage isn't just being brave in dangerous situations. It also means standing up for what you believe in, speaking out against unfairness and never giving up on your values, not even when things seem small. On the other hand, justice means being fair and caring to others and not just thinking about your own well-being but also the well-being of everyone. Finding the right balance in life, staying away from excesses and making decisions that will help you in the long run are all parts of temperance or self-control. Marcus Aurelius was a good leader who showed these qualities. Don't waste time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one, he said at one point. This way of thinking about ethics can help us live better lives. These good traits can be shown every day by doing something nice for someone, standing up for a co-worker, or picking the harder right over the easier wrong. Being good and honest in our daily lives is a path that constantly tests and improves us. It's about making sure that our actions are in line with our higher values and that our knowledge not only helps us succeed, but also makes the world a better place. By adopting stoic ideals, we improve not only how we make decisions, but also who we are as people. This helps us live a life that is not only smart, but also admirable and inspiring. 9. Develop thanks to gain more wisdom. Continuing our trip through stoic methods to make us smarter, we reach a deep but often ignored part, learning to be grateful. Stoicism tells us that being wise is more than just knowing things or having a good mind. It's also about enjoying every part of life. This is where practicing gratitude comes in. It can help you gain more knowledge and a more balanced view of things. Stoicism views gratitude as a mindset and a way of seeing the world, not just as a simple thank you. It means seeing the worth in everything, even the smallest good things. When we regularly think about the good things in our lives, we shift our attention from what we don't have to what we do have. This change brings happiness and peace, which are important for clear and smart thought. One useful way to learn to be grateful is to do some reflection every day. You could start or end your day by writing down three things you're thankful for. It could be something as easy as a nice meal, a chat with a friend, or the beauty of nature. Putting them down in a book can help you get better at this thoughtful exercise. Epictetus said that we should focus on the things we can change. Being grateful helps us do this by keeping us in the present and making us appreciate what we have right now. This way of doing things encourages us to be humble and grateful, which gives us the tools to deal with problems in a fair and careful way. 
practicing thanks fills our lives with deep understanding and happiness, making our thoughts clear and our choices solid. It shows that learning from other people isn't the only way to become wise. Enjoying our lives as they are is also important. Being grateful every day helps us develop a mindset that makes us smarter and more satisfied with life, shifting our focus toward happiness, respect, and a better understanding of things. Tenth, take some time to be quiet and clear your mind. Finally, our last stoic way to get smarter is to use the power of being alone and quiet. Stoicism shows us how to find inner peace and clarity by focusing on ourselves. This is especially useful in today's busy and noisy world. Quiet times are important because they help us disconnect from the chaos around us and connect with our true selves. For the mind to clear, for reflection to occur, and for our mental batteries to recharge, this break is essential. We often have our deepest thoughts and find the best answers to hard problems when there is silence. It might seem hard to fit these quiet times into our busy lives, but there are easy ways to do it that are still important. Consider devoting some time to quiet reflection at the beginning or end of your day. One way to do this is to meditate, do deep breathing techniques, or just sit quietly and think. Instead, look for peace and quiet in nature, like on a walk in the park or by a lake. This will create the ideal environment for reflection. Disconnecting from our digital gadgets every so often is another good idea. This digital break is necessary to clear our minds and concentrate better. Along with these things, writing in a book in a quiet place can be very helpful. Writing down your thoughts is a lot like meditating, in that it helps clear your mind and give you a new viewpoint. We can follow the stoic road of self-discovery and mental renewal by savoring these quiet times. In addition to making us smarter, this practice helps us understand ourselves and the world around us in a deeper, more meaningful way. Remember that if you want to be smart, sometimes the deepest thoughts come from being still and thinking about yourself. Don't forget that each of these habits is a way to live a smarter, more healthy and more satisfying life. Not only do they push us to get smarter, but they also push us to get smarter in other ways. The Stoics thought that intelligence was more than just knowing things. They thought that intelligence was also about living a life based on understanding, ethics and inner peace. It said, don't set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. Ancient Stoic advice says it's important to find a balance between being kind and taking care of yourself. But in today's rush to be liked and always be the one who helps, many people have turned the good deed of kindness into a habit that hurts their own self-esteem. People often tell us to go the extra mile and push our limits for other people. But how much does it cost? Truth be told, being too kind is not a trait when it takes your own resources, energy and health. It's a way to ruin yourself. Many people have lost their way and have given so much that they feel useless, unloved and worn out. In this urban tragedy, people who mean well end up doing terrible things. Stoicism shows us a different way to be helpful without giving up who you are. To be kind without being mean to yourself. It shows us how to be generous in a way that makes other people's lives better while also looking out for our own. Let's talk about how stoic principles can help you set healthy limits so that your kindness builds you up instead of draining you. To give without losing, to love without hurting, and to be there for others without leaving our own lives, we will talk about it. To help us walk the fine line between kindness and self-preservation, Stoicism has taught us. 1. Don't set yourself on fire to make other people warm. Marcus Aurelius, a wise Stoic philosopher, would warn us not to fall into the trap of being too kind. Picture yourself as someone who is always willing to help others and never says no. 
Giving away parts of yourself until there are none left is like that. You turn into someone who is always there for other people, but when you need help, you find yourself all by yourself. Being kind to other people is important, but being kind to yourself is even more important. Marcus would tell us that taking care of ourselves is our first job. We can't really be there for other people without it. Think about the story of two gardeners who lived next door to each other. One took great care of their own garden, and the other, even though they had their own plot, often helped take care of other people's gardens. Knowing the value of self-care, the dedicated gardener gave their garden the right amount of care and resources, making it a thriving and growing place. This gardener's area not only brought them joy, but they also had extra food to share with their neighbors. The other farmer, on the other hand, spent so much time and energy on other people's grounds that they forgot about their own. They didn't take good care of their yard, so it died and didn't produce much. In their desire to help, they forgot about their own needs, which left their yard, and by extension, themselves, empty. This is a warning to think about what you want to do before you start helping other people. Ask yourself if this help will last. Am I taking care of my health? Stoics from the past would tell us to use Stoicism by setting healthy limits and remembering to be kind to ourselves as we try to be kind to others. You can't pour from a cup that's not full, after all. Stoicism teaches you to keep your inner peace and honesty while also making the lives of others better. This way, you and the people you want to help will both have a healthy and satisfying life. 2. Being friendly with someone has an end date. Being kind and generous makes our lives and the lives of those around us better. But there is a sneaky trap in Stoicism, an old theory that still speaks wisdom to us in our busy lives when it teaches us too much about the limits of kindness. It's good to help others with an open heart, but it can be disappointing to expect the same level of kindness in return. Life often shows us that the good things we do today might not be remembered tomorrow. This isn't a reflection of how valuable we are or how valuable our actions are. Rather, it's just how people naturally remember and feel grateful for things. Think of giving as growing a tree. You take care of it and hope that it grows so that it can shade your home or provide food in the future. Nature does what it does though. Storms, droughts and the seasons all happen. In the same way, when we show kindness, we should let go of the hope of getting something in return. Stoics, especially Epictetus, say that we should think about what we do instead of what happens. He said, some things are within our control and some things are not. This was a reminder that the joy of giving should come from doing it itself, not from hoping to get something in return. We can avoid the pain of unfulfilled hopes by adopting this mindset. It develops our emotional resilience so that we can keep being kind and giving without getting worn out or feeling exploited. This doesn't mean we should close our hearts, but we should find a balance. Do not see the effect of your kindness as a deal, but as a reflection of who you are. By doing this, we not only safeguard our peace of mind, but also develop a kind of kindness that is self-sustaining and truly satisfying. This stoic concept tells us to give freely but carefully so that our kindness makes us better no matter what other people do. How can you use the stoic principle of giving without expecting anything in your everyday life? Imagine a situation in which you can show kindness or help someone without expecting anything in return. Then, think about what you could do to make sure that your giving stays a source of joy for you instead of draining you. 3. There are no limits on received requests. When you think about the past, it's interesting to see how much help kings required, from getting dressed to keeping themselves clean, which was all done by servants. Now that it's 2019, it's clear that people still expect things from us, and they often ask for favors that they could easily do themselves. 
Stoicism sheds light on this and teaches us how important it is to set limits and accept balance. This old idea is like a lighthouse. It shows us the way through the sea of endless requests so we can act with purpose and keep our emotional health. Stoicism isn't about turning down help. It's about finding balance so that we don't lose ourselves while helping others. One moving story is about a mother and her adult daughter who live in a cute town. The mother cared for her daughter so much out of love that she wouldn't let her take care of her duties. This pattern continued until the mother died too soon, which surprised everyone by making the daughter more independent. This story shows an important lesson. Even if our goals are good, giving too much help can stop growth without meaning to. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic ruler, said it best in his meditations. A man's job is to stand upright, not to be kept upright by others. This insight encourages us to promote self-reliance, which creates a balance that is good for everyone. Seneca, who had a lot of knowledge about how people connect with each other, said, He who becomes your friend because of the benefit will also stop because of the benefit. This is a strong lesson to build relationships based on real ties instead of transactions. Stoicism teaches us to value ourselves not for what we can do, but for who we are. This builds self-esteem and helps us connect with others in a real way. Stoicism gives us the strength to be moderate, to set limits to protect our own health while still truly helping others. By putting our needs first and tasks second, we not only stay true to ourselves, but we also do more important acts of kindness. We can stay true to ourselves and our ideals and live a good, happy life if we take this sensible approach to life and relationships. Staying aware of our own needs is not selfish. It's a necessary part of self-care as we deal with the challenges of modern life. 4. Being seen and treated as weak. Stoicism teaches us a lot about self-command and inner resilience. To build a fortress inside, learn how to control yourself and make clear lines in the sand that mark our personal space. Ironically, always going the extra mile for other people can make you look weak over time. When we don't set clear limits, we leave ourselves open to being taken advantage of by people who see our kindness not as a strength but as a chance to gain something. This loop of overextending ourselves and taking advantage of others drains us, making us feel unappreciated and overworked. However, things change when we start to firmly say no. We're not the first people people come to with any needs or requests. Being outspoken shows that we value our time and energy, which makes others respect us in return. Cicero, a famous Stoic philosopher, said it best. What you think of yourself is much more important than what others think of you. By setting limits and being self-disciplined, we not only protect our mental and emotional health, but we also get respect from those around us. Remember that the word no has the power to change things. It shows how much you value yourself and how much attention you expect from others. Adopt this motto and see how it changes the way your relationships work promoting respect based on self-worth and pride. Being a part of this change, however, isn't always easy. Being open to everyone often brings in people who need help, leaving you out of the spotlight when it's time to celebrate. Being open might keep you out of times of happiness, relegating you to the role of helper and keeping you away from times of pleasure. This painful realization helps us tell the difference between real links and ones that are just looking for an easy way to make money. It's a tough way to figure out what relationships are really worth, and it makes us more careful about who we give our time and energy to. Did you know that another important Stoic concept is setting boundaries? Doing so not only makes us happier, but it also makes our relationships better. It's an interesting but true fact about how people think and feel. People tend to respect us more when we are brave enough to say no. 
This contradictory effect shows how self-respect can change things and how important it is to be careful in our relationships. Stoic knowledge not only keeps us from getting burned out, but it also helps us build relationships that are mutually beneficial. Please give a thumbs up if you think you have learned something useful so far. Let's talk about ways to stay safe from being used by others and from the bad effects of being too kind. First, get over your fear of saying no. Think about why the word no often feels so heavy and how it may have come from learning that being nice meant accepting others. Such lessons are strongly ingrained in us from the time we are young and are mixed with a fear of being rejected. This creates a belief system that says our worth is equal to being accepted all the time. Stoicism, on the other hand, encourages us to question and break down these deeply held beliefs. It promotes a life of free will rather than one that is ruled by the undercurrents of past training. Adults have the freedom to change how they deal with others because they know that the fears they were taught as kids no longer control them. Stoicism gives us the mental tools to look at our feelings and figure out what they mean. This lets us deal with life's challenges without letting old habits control us. Saying no to requests that cross our limits, especially when they hurt our well-being or sense of what's fair, is not only a way to fight old fears, but also a powerful way to show self-respect and independence. But it's important to keep our increased confidence in check by developing our emotional intelligence and sensitivity. Stoicism doesn't just support self-interest or being alone, it also stresses how important it is to make a good difference in our community and in the lives of those around us. The theory tells us to find a halfway ground where we can help and support others without putting our own health at risk. These situations need emotional intelligence because it helps us know when and how to help in a way that is good for both us and the other person. Real Stoic knowledge means being aware of our own limits while also understanding the real needs of others. It makes sure that our acts of kindness are not only self-disciplined, but also compassionate and understanding. This helps build a society where people respect and help each other. The second thing you can do is pay attention to how you feel. Stoicism encourages reflection and mindfulness by encouraging us to examine our feelings and thoughts, which builds mental resilience. This old knowledge tells us to take care of our inner peace by paying attention to how we react and feel, especially when we do kind things. It teaches us that helping others should make us feel good, like how clouds make us feel lighter. On the other hand, feelings of weariness, anger or abuse mean that you need to change your perspective. It's important to know when our efforts, which aren't required, start to make us less calm. Being honest about how this makes you feel is not lying to yourself. It's a brave act of self-care that keeps our kindness from becoming a source of stress and pain. The third tip is to put yourself first. In the most obscure areas, it's easy to become a master and forget about our own health. Making time for self-care is essential, just like the stoic values of focus and self-esteem. Stoicism, after all, is good for the soul and teaches us how to be self-sufficient. Instead of neglecting yourself, take care of your physical, emotional and mental health, recognize your presence and make your needs more important. You have to give this method your full attention. Accept yourself completely Forgive yourself for mistakes you've made in the past and see the coming year as a blank slate for a calm restart. Choose something that will only make you happy and use this time to show how much you love yourself. Hold on to your limits and don't feel bad about turning down others if their requests come into your refuge. Help them as much as you can while making it clear that your own recovery comes first. Finding the people is the fourth approach. Stoic traits like self-discipline and insight give us the power to tell the difference between relationships that make us feel good 
and ones that make us feel bad. Dealing with people who always want more, whether it's attention, time or resources, makes us, the nurturers, tired. Stoicism helps us learn how important inner strength is and reminds us that change is a door that only one person can open. Because it is a mistake to think that we can change other people just by being nice to them. Change that lasts is a personal journey that starts with one's own drive, not with outside help. This way of thinking doesn't support being cold-hearted. Instead, it supports a healthy way of dealing with relationships. It's a dance of give and take. Being too generous can leave us empty, and being too cheap can make us feel alone. As Stoics, we are told to use our kindness and charity, but we are also told to use our judgment and cut ties when it's best for our health. It's about finding balance and making sure that our acts of kindness don't drain our energy. Remember that the best relationships are ones in which both people grow, not ones in which one person dies so the other can bloom. Stoicism tells us to find a balance and makes us think carefully about what we do and how it affects other people. It stresses how important it is to keep our charity in check, telling us not to spend all of our money on others at the expense of our main goal, which is to live a happy life. On the other hand, it tells us not to be too careful when we give and instead urges us to be generous but smart about it. Seneca, a great thinker in Stoic philosophy, said it best. Kindness is a treasure, a benefit, should be kept like a buried treasure, to be unearthed only in case of necessity. His words remind us to be ready to be kind to others, recognizing the deep bond that exists between all people. As we conclude our comprehensive journey through the teachings and applications of Stoicism, it's important to remember that the path to mastering this ancient philosophy is ongoing. Throughout this guide, we've explored the foundational techniques of Stoicism, delving into how they can be applied to various aspects of life to build resilience, achieve personal growth, and ultimately craft the happiest dream life possible. Yet, the true essence of Stoicism lies in the continuous practice and integration of its principles into our daily lives. Embracing Stoicism is not a one-time task, but a lifelong commitment to growth, learning and self-improvement. It's about making a conscious effort every day to apply the techniques we've discussed, whether it's practicing mindfulness, reflecting on your actions through journaling, or reminding yourself of the dichotomy of control. The real test of Stoicism comes not from understanding its concepts, but from living them, especially in moments of challenge and uncertainty. As you move forward, remember that the journey of Stoicism is personal and unique to each individual. There will be moments of success and moments of struggle. What's important is not the obstacles you face, but how you choose to respond to them. By applying the Stoic principles, you can turn every challenge into an opportunity for growth and every moment into a step toward your happiest, most fulfilling life. Keep revisiting the teachings shared in this guide, reflect on your progress and continue to apply Stoic wisdom in all facets of your life. The path to a Stoic life is paved with perseverance, patience and persistence. With each step, you'll find yourself becoming more resilient, more content, and closer to realizing your dream life. Thank you for embarking on this journey through Stoicism with us. May the wisdom of the Stoics guide you in your pursuit of happiness, and may you find strength, peace, and fulfillment in the practice of this timeless philosophy. Here's to living a life aligned with virtue, reason, and the pursuit of your highest self.